All right, everybody. Uh, welcome back to uh, another episode of Tackle and Tacos, a fishing podcast. Uh, episode episode 48. Uh, 48. 48, yeah. Uh, got to be stoked about number 48. Uh, we got a good one on. Uh, I think it's going to get a lot of a lot of good insight on on you know the fishing industry, boating industry, probably primarily, and uh, what running a running a club, a fishing yeah, club, running right? a basketball, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, we got we got an awesome guest in uh, in Justin Rowe. So let's yep. uh, yeah, I'm excited for this one. So let, we'll we'll uh, we'll bring him on here in a second. But uh, yeah, we'll try us, we'll uh, try and we'll try and move a little bit quicker this week, Nate. Last week, yeah, a- apologies was, yeah. to our apologies to our new buddy Sarge uh, of Sarge's Custom Rods down there in uh, China, Texas, which I'll never forget China. that name, and I'm still so like thrown <laughs> off by it, honestly. Yeah. Um, but big shout out to that fella. Uh, we took like 25 minutes of talking last week before we ever even got to Sarge, and I just. It was like it was a good conversation, but I'm like, dude, we can't, <laughs> we yeah, can't be that waiting probably, that long. Yeah, that was probably our longest intro ever. That was uh, it was, was. definitely some, t- some time before we brought brought our guest in. Yeah, yeah but we'll, uh, we'll but, cut to the chase on this one. There was a reason though for some of you're, it last right. week. There was yeah, a reason, that, and so like are. you know, re sort of announcing. Still excited about it. Uh, we are part of Team Loophold Optics um, for their polarized sunnies. Um, you know, we're basically, so what happened was Leupold saw our podcast and said, those guys are as good at fishing <laughs> as Brandon Polinick and Absolutely. Stetson Blaylock and John Cox and all these other guys. And I was like, well, you know, um, I don't know if I've ever said it on this podcast. One time I was goofing around with Brandon back and forth and cause we were talking about how he isn't on Rapala anymore, you know, and he's on mega bass for all hard yeah. bait stuff. And, uh, I said something like, yeah, man, mega bass keeps on like chasing me down saying, yo, we want to pay you. And he's like, I know, right. dude, I told him they can't afford you. I'm like, thanks man. Just let them know, you know, <laughs> tell, uh, tell, uh, Ido that he can't afford old, uh, tackling tacos, but anywho, yeah. man. So sponsorship stuff, we are legitimately so excited still about, uh, loophole optics to be a part of that team and not just because they're a sponsor, but man, their sunglasses are dope polarization yeah. is next level they're comfortable we said it last week but they're like a good combination of like heavy so they feel legitimate but not like super heavy if that makes any sense like they don't feel cheapy but they don't feel like too heavy um the polarization their their technology they put it between layers of the lens so it's not just a filter that gets slapped on at the end of production like these are these are high end uh, what do they call them? performance eyewear performance fishing eyewear, yeah. fishing sunglasses they're just they're super yeah. legit so um i love mine i wear them constantly um when i'm outside and uh yeah so we're excited about that uh gill tech like always we talked about uh gill tech we got some pictures today of the of the guys who we sent a free a few free swim jigs to last week for like our little social thing um nate what is our socials how, how do people find us uh, you can definitely find us on all the socials. Well, all of I guess, pro- yeah, primarily uh, Instagram, Facebook, and and of course YouTube at uh, yeah. Tackle and Tacos. You know, just just that simple. Tackle and Tacos. Uh, even tackleandtacos dot com, where you can uh, pick up some some dope merch that we still got. So yeah, uh, yeah, nice so transition. I'll- that was good. <laughs> Yeah, that was, I'm trying. I'm, tr- I'm trying to catch on to this stuff. I'm yeah, that was to, professional, trying, dude. What's, trying to what's level the, up to the transition sound. Ooh, yeah, yeah, trying to level up to to old Jordy's level. You know what I mean? Please, but, dude. I'm the worst. On <laughs> honestly, that's the funny thing. So people who uh, I just talked to a, a buddy that I work with who found out via our favorite Mexican place in Eau Claire, um, Guac and Roll, that we have a podcast because he was like, "Oh, my friend Jordan, blah blah blah," and you're like, "Oh yeah, we were on his podcast," and he was like, "Jordan has a podcast." And I think that when people hear that I'm a part of a podcast, they're like, oh, he must be like a really articulate speaker. And instead, they listen to it and they go, holy crap, this dude has ADHD on a level the world has never seen. And I'm just rabbit holing down every possible like distraction lane that I can. (laughs) But anyway. Let's be real though. It it is articulate ADHD. Like it's articulate. Sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I have an expansive vocabulary. You know, my vernacular (laughs) is always on the upgrade. However, I I like to follow a rabbit down a trail pretty much constantly. Um, So the Giltech stuff you can only get um, at hook and arrow supply.com. And I am so sorry. Last week when I was editing the video, it's, it's the company is hook and arrow supply co but the website is hookandarrowsupply.com. And I said it with the co whatever. I mean, I'm sure people right. can find it either way, but um, yeah. they really are some of the dopest swim jigs out there and everything else, Ned heads. And um, one of the really unique things that they make is a tube jig 
that has uh, a little section of marabou fur uh, sticking. Is it fur? Do you call it marabou fur, marabou feathers? I'm not yeah, sure. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, that's yeah cool. sticking off the back side of it. So when your tube is at rest, if you're fishing it slow, especially in slow water, that little bit of marabou still just got a little bit of wave in it. And it's not like it's taped on. Like it's actually cast into the metal of the head. So it's not going anywhere. Um, the dude just makes really creative stuff. So hookandarrowsupply.com. Uh, and then also Grizzly Coolers. This is stuff that we use constantly. I'm quite certain Nate has the cup on him right now. He stay with that cup. Uh, on deck. Yes, sir. Yeah, on Grizzly deck. Coolers and their line like their one specific arm of grizzly coolers keen eye which was made specifically for um anglers so that was designed colors sizes of coolers all that stuff for anglers specifically so that's that's pretty rad um and then before we uh bring justin on which is going to happen in just a second because like i said we're not doing a 25 minute wind up like last week <laughs> uh but nate happy birthday dude well it's happy early birthday we got, still we got, a, we got another day yeah, but by the time this launches, though, you will, right. you will be, you will be, what are you turning? 35? 35. I will be yeah. 35 uh, years of age. Uh, you dirty say. old fart. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, sometimes I feel it too. You know, I wake yeah. up out of bed, the ankles are just, sore for sore. no reason. Yeah, yeah. Ex exactly. Like, I didn't Trying do to eat dinner at 3 30 in bed by four. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, wild. Uh, yeah. But yeah no, th thank you. I appreciate it. And, Happy birthday. Uh, yeah, I imagine uh, it'll be a good one. It always is spending it yeah. with the family. So yeah, you got any plans or what? Uh, no plans. Uh, no? nothing. Nothing real specific. I'll probably just hang out uh, here at the house and you know, go to go to dinner. I think that's kind of like our family tradition is whoever's birthday it is, they get to pick where we go, go. out to yeah. eat. Exactly. Yeah. Either either I'll cook for you or we'll go out to eat. And okay. Um, I don't know why, and it's really odd because I'm not a huge fan. Um, but I think we're going to Texas Roadhouse tomorrow. It just sounds, okay. it just sounds, it just sounds good. And and yeah. um, if I want a like steak, the greatest, but it's good. Yeah. No, and that's the thing is, if I want a steak, I I do it way better on the grill. You know, no what I mean? doubt. But, yeah, for but sure. Like something about the 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 blooming onion and the throwing and the rolls. peanuts on the floor. Exactly. Throw the shells <laughs> on the floor. Get yeah. get the rolls with the cinnamon butter. You know, yeah. we. I, we haven't been there in a really long time, so I think that's okay. where we're going to head tomorrow. So Dope, dude. Yeah, well, happy birthday. Yeah. Then also tomorrow. Now, yes. this is obviously going to launch on, I don't know the date, but a Tuesday. Everything we put out is ta uh, Taco Tuesdays at 5 a.m., YouTube, yeah. podcast, all well, that stuff. It's the 12th. Was it? Yeah, I think you're right. The 12th, because then the next one, yeah, is the 19th, yeah. and that one is gonna be really exciting. So tomorrow, on your birthday, we're tracking an episode with the product line manager of Great Lakes Finesse, and yes. the really rad thing about that one is that. Um, he said, yeah, that'd be great. We can record it this day and then we can show you guys some of the stuff that we're going to be launching at the classic. Um, so we're launching the episode with Great Lakes Finesse on the 19th. Classic starts on the 22nd. Um, so you'll get like a little sneak peek into some of their stuff. And uh, yeah. yeah, they just make some of the coolest stuff. Like I remember when I first heard about that company, I was like, why would you call your company like one specific one sort specific of specific type of technique. style? Yeah, yeah, yeah Finesse. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's I, mean, I mean, when's the last time you watched a tournament in the last couple of years where somebody wasn't either you know moping yeah. demiki rig hover strolling drop shotting ned exactly. rigging something yeah. with a finesse something and so uh, yeah. i think it can be really cool to learn from those dudes yeah for sure i don't remember who i said it to but i was like uh you know the development of this company and that idea of that like finesse technique was brought yeah. about at the absolute perfect time oh my gosh like, yeah. with you know the you know, forward facing and you know that that whole crazy like everybody like it throwing it that, that sounds stuff. everybody yes yeah. absolutely so yeah that, that's smart I'm, I'm stoked for that one but uh you know before that one we got to get through this one and yeah. this is gonna be another good one i'm, I'm ready yeah for it. yeah i'm excited yeah. so uh before we bring him in one second here um nate let me ask you what's one of your favorite movies oh boy you done call me <laughs> All right, change, 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 change the question. I'm, I'm a big, yeah, I'm a big comedy guy. So okay. I, I just, I absolutely love comedies. What do you got? I'm gonna say one of my favorites is probably Talladega Nights. Okay, like yeah. If like that, every time I watch that movie, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter when. It it just it always cracks me up. Like that that movie's hilarious. So yeah. a totally movie. random question. I just want to start asking yeah, each yeah. other, like the so. host, random questions on the podcast, <laughs> like just in the beginning. But not everybody yeah. knows. You know, maybe they're only listening to this because they want to listen to Justin, or maybe they're only watching this because they want to, you know, hear Brian Latimer or whatever who we have coming up. But 
Let's let's get yeah. to know each other a little bit too. Ask me a random one. Give me something stupid, and then we'll bring Justin in. Uh, random question: What yeah. is your favorite hat? Everybody has a favorite hat. Which one is your favorite? You switch uh, them out all. Switch them out on the regular. I do I have a lot. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I have a lot. So I, I've always been on this kick of like vintagey crap. And yeah. not because of like vintage is trendy. I just think it's rad, like old stuff. There's something cool about it. So like this crew neck that I'm wearing right now, what does it say on it? American Angler. Uh, this was Lola's uh, Grandpa David's crew neck, which is kind of rad. Uh, he was a big fisherman. Yeah, like if you go over to her cool, parents' yeah. house, there's all these pictures of him holding, holding up bass and whatever. And then this hat is from the classic from 1989. Like it's an actual hat that they issued out to the anglers in 89. Um, so yeah. probably this hat, I have a bomber one that's super old um, that, that I wore in a tournament with Chippewa Valley Bass Attack a couple years ago that we lost. Like we got second place by like an ounce, I think, or two ounces or something. Yeah. And so like yeah. it was almost my yeah. lucky hat and then it's not. But um, <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, so speaking of transition speaking of triple valley bass attack the fellow we got uh in in the queue in the background right now we're excited to bring in as our guest here on episode 48 his name is justin Rowe. this is a guy who um number one is an awesome angler good fisherman um runs yeah, a really rad uh, marine dealership here in um, northern wisconsin called the boat center um and then also is the president of the chippewa valley hopefully that's the right wording hope that's the right title i don't know i guess we'll find out um of the chippewa valley bass attack a very well-known um club bass club of absolute hammers and so we're excited to talk to him about fishing uh, about life about uh, what it actually feels like looks like to be a, a bass president because i'm sure it's really fun and i'm sure there's moments where it's like not very fun you know uh, yeah, for sure. talk about uh, trends in the marine world just whatever so uh, without any further ado we are excited to bring into tackle and tacos uh mr justin Rowe. yo hey guys hey well, welcome man. welcome I was uh, listening to you there, and I was thinking of. Oh no, he's frozen. Right. We and we just we we just, <laughs> we talked, just about talked about it. About it. Yeah. No. We talked about how solid his internet had been. Yeah. You know, up up to this point. And yeah. Now he, and then now he, he freezes. freezes. Yeah. We were talking to him. We were talking to him beforehand, and he was saying how he's got a new house, and he's out in the sticks, and his internet is kind of in and out. And so now, at the moment, it's just it's just out. So it's just uh, we'll, out. Yeah. We'll try it again in just a second. We'll <laughs> see if we can get him back. But like I was saying in the intro piece, um, one of the rad things about Justin is that we can take this a whole bunch of different angles. Um, we can talk to him about fishing, running a marine place, you know, whatever. So, uh, Justin, if you can hear me right now i feel like i'm on like a stranger things or poltergeist or something talking you to a different hear me. if you can hear me justin uh sign out and then sign back in like jump off of Streamyard, which is the platform we use for this and then jump back in and we'll see if we can get you working um but yeah so Justin runs the boat center, which actually happens to be uh, one of the sponsors for a bass elite fisherman um, that we reference all the time on here because he's a local and he's just a cool dude and he's an absolute hammer, uh, Pat Schlopper. So you'll see the boat center on the side of his Skeeter. Um, they are a Skeeter dealership. Um, I think it was like two years ago, Nate, I'm so stupid. Two years ago, I asked somebody like, why are all Skeeters rocking Yamahas? Like I had no idea. Well, it was probably longer than that, but I didn't know. Right, somebody's yeah. like, because Yamaha owns Skeeter. So they're kind of, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. That I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. It took, I didn't, I didn't realize that for, yeah. for quite some time either. But yeah. Maybe a couple, yeah, probably a couple years ago that I, oh, you know what? Oh, that, that makes, makes uh, yeah. Yeah. That somebody, somebody told me that, that they, yeah. uh, I think it might've been our boy, Mark LaFont, who has a Skeeter yeah. with a Yami on the back. And I was like, yeah, dude, I saw a Skeeter the other day with a Merc on the back. And he's like, that'd make me throw up. I was like, oh, all right. Well, <laughs> geez Louise. But, all right. I think he's back. Let's try to bring him back in. Justin, are you there? Can you see me? I can yeah, see you. Yeah, you we can hear All you. Right. All Let's right. see if we can yeah. make this work now. Welcome again. Welcome back. Yeah. Now, so now I know. So I've never done a podcast, but I yeah. like every single one I've watched of anybody's. There's always a moment where they lose the the gas. Yeah. <laughs> so now I know what that feels like. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm back. Yeah. Good. Well, I'm glad you're back. We uh we had. Uh, the Serious okay. Angler podcast, guys. I don't know if you've ever seen or listened to that podcast um, on a while back. And uh, the main host of that, Bailey, he was like in the middle of telling a story 
and it was like a pretty engaging story. And then he kept on freezing and we we're like, Oh, like, right. Like the, the, you know, the punchline or the big moment, yeah. but, but, uh, how are you, man? How's life? How are you doing? I'm, I'm good. And I was, I was, I was making a comment listening to you guys talk about the, your, uh, random questions. Oh yeah. And, uh, I got me thinking, I'm like, I don't know if I, I bet I haven't, I bet I haven't watched a movie, an actual movie and like, it's gotta be 10 to 15 years. Oh my gosh. So, oh, wow. so I was thinking like, if, if, if you were going to ask me that, I would, I would have went the same route. I would have went, uh, like, like a step brothers or Talladega yeah. nights yes. somewhere okay. in there yeah, on the funny side or on the other, on this, on, uh, I do like like Wolf of Wall Street and that kind of stuff too. Yeah. So uh, yeah, 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 that's, that's a good. One. To, yeah. to answer your your hat question, because <laughs> anybody that's listening that does know me knows I'm a hat guy too. Yeah, yeah. But I've got one of them weird uh, uh, shaped heads where I can't wear like a high profile hat. Yeah. So I right. have to wear like this style hat, which anybody that knows hats, like this is the Legacy brand hat. Yeah. It's called. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's the most comfortable hat you'll ever they put on comfy. if you got a shallow hat. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, That's perfect. Yeah, so you, sense. you could you perfect. couldn't wear Nate's hat yeah. right now, is what you're saying. No, no chance. Yeah. yeah. No chance. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So Justin, um, we're, we're super pumped to have you, man. One thing is, you know, we haven't been doing this podcast super long. We're, we're, we're coming up on a year. Like we recorded our first episode last year during the classic. Um, and now obviously that's coming right around the corner pretty quick here. Yeah. Um, but right out of the gates, like you were a guy that we wanted to have on and I've been, I've been bugging you forever about being on it just because like I said, you are a great fisherman. You run a Marine dealership, um, run or you're the manager at the boat center, right? Like the general manager. Manager. yeah well yeah that that and i actually um i was trying to think um i want to say it's uh i think it was 2021 2020 or 2021 um i actually bought into the dealership too so i've been oh, wow. a part, part part owner now for uh i think three going on four years oh that's awesome man awesome. good it's for like, you yeah, which is kind Congrats. of odd to not know that I, but also like <laughs> anybody that's been that remember like anything that's happened through the covid years yeah it's basically just like a black hole like you just yeah, don't cool. know if it's like 2020 or 2022 yeah, seriously. yeah it's hard to tell like what happened there but yeah for sure man and then also yeah. it, is, is the wording correct here justin are you the president of the bass attack or what is that yeah okay. yeah yeah, and, and that's that's only because I think it has to be that through the Wisconsin Bass Nation. Like you have to have like a president, vice president. You have to have actual officers, you know, yeah, that yeah. Uh, head the club. Right. So yeah, it was not cool. my, it would not be my choosing to be uh, <laughs> title. The titles are not really a thing for me. I, that's I not like know. on like your email signature, President Justin. No, or not, something. not yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. So, um, yeah, so we were just excited to be able to talk about fishing, talk about boat stuff, talk about uh, running a bass club. Because I would assume, right, that there's got to be times where running a bass club is not the funnest thing in the world, or it's tough trying to figure out schedules or whatever. And so, you know, we want to get some in some kind of inside insight on that stuff. But before we do all that. Um, this is one of my favorite things that we ask everybody, um, everybody who's on our podcast, uh, which is how did you, I mean, I'm not talking about tournament fishing or getting all serious, but how did you get into fishing, whether it was when you were a kid or whatever, but what kicked off that passion for you? Yeah, easy. I mean, it's, um, it's probably pretty typical to, um, answer that most people give. Um, I mean, but for sure my, my, grandparents on both sides are what really got us like okay into fishing i mean my my parents were fishermen as well um but i mean when you go way way back when you're just little kids um you know you spend a lot of time with your well I, we spent like me and my brother we spent a lot of time with our grandparents uh you know camping in the summers so um we never had a boat um okay you know we we didn't we didn't have a uh we didn't have a boat until Gosh, I bet I was um, maybe twelve or you know early teens or something like that. We ne we never had a, 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 an actual boat, so we were uh, bank fishing. Sure. Uh, my my grandpa on the one side, he did have a boat. Um, you know, so we went. Uh, we learned. Uh, he was an avid musky fisherman, so we learned how to awesome. musky fish um, with him. So that's just that's where it stemmed, you know. And then it it just kind of went from there, like like most people do, but. Yeah. Um, you know, I, 
um, well, actually in today's today's world, it's kind of I guess I I would consider me a little bit late to the like bass tournament world. Okay. Um, we didn't start that until um, probably twenty to. 20 21 20 to 21 somewhere in there oh really okay um huh. yeah and my and my brother he didn't start tournament fishing until i bet he was in his uh mid to late 20s maybe okay. 25 or you know basically we're uh um however long we've been in the club now about four or five years so he was even a little later too but i mean we've always we've been avid fishermen our entire lives just mm. we, we were a little bit late to the the tournament world because you know, we grew up in northern Wisconsin, and um, you know, back then that's a long and you know, this was a long time ago. So back yeah. then, <laughs> uh, bass fishing is—I mean, it was certainly not a thing in northern Wisconsin, and um, like there were no bass boats. You would never see a bass boat. In northern right? Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and nobody even knew, like, nobody knew anything about tournament fishing in northern Wisconsin, bass fishing, you know, bass tournaments. Right. And really, there's just nobody targeted them. So, um, so we were, we were really, really late to that, to the bass fishing, uh, like the tournament world. But we had bass fish, like I said, our entire lives. You know, we, we were pretty serious in the summer. We, I mean, we'd go out, you know, daylight to dark in the summer, yeah. just, just fishing. So, so yeah, so that's, I mean, I think it's a pretty typical, way of being brought into fishing you know through your yeah. grandparents or your dad or you know, something like that yeah i love i think that people people actually say what you just said like they say it was their dad or whatever and then they'll say the thing like oh it's kind of typical but i think that's actually sort of great right like i think it's yeah, amazing sure. that there is so many grandparents there is so many dads who are still willing to because the thing is it's like on a postcard or in like a commercial during a bass tournament like take a kid fishing it's all great but it's not always as easy when you go out with a kid who gets snagged up every two seconds or doesn't know how to cast or is impatient or wants to switch lures so knowing that there is still people who will take their kids kids fishing or their grandkids what like that's yeah. that's awesome i think that's great man yeah you just got to get them there you know you don't really have to worry about um getting them to you know um well i guess we you know for us you know it was never about catching fish you know it was always yeah, totally. we were more intrigued you know you know showing up to um you know a river and wading across the river or wading up and down it yeah. you know fishing suckers or fishing you know basically anything that swims by you know like we were in it was more of like adventure than it was yes. like we got to get out here and catch fish i mean it didn't, it didn't matter you know we could yep. catch whatever yeah. so it's like you know if i mean that's what that's all it takes you know is to just get somebody like you don't have to have a boat you don't have to have all the equipment that we have nowadays right you, know, you just gotta you just gotta get them close to the water and just whether they fish or not i mean th that's up to them but um you know even if it's just messing around watching fish in the in the you know in a river like that you know i mean I, that's probably what happened to us i mean that's, that's long enough where i couldn't remember but i mean to this day i love just sitting there watching streams Same. you know yep. not even fishing so Same. you know you get kids yeah, around for that, sure that's 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 probably all you need to do really to introduce them to fishing you know it's not yeah. you don't really have to go out and fill up the bucket to make it a successful outing you know yeah that was good man that was good that so, was a good piece of advice right there dude for sure yeah, yeah. um so really fast i just want to say something was uh I, I don't know how your grandpa who had a boat i don't know how he did it um, but my grandpa back in the day, um, I've, I've said this on this podcast a thousand times, we would make like an annual trip up to Hayward, same thing. Like it was mostly musky and pike fishing and whatever. And I remember a couple things. One, I remember one time it was spawn and there was a giant bass on a bed but back then i just i was like dude there's this bass and it's in like this hole and it won't leave it so i i kept on throwing lures at it and i i caught it and i weighed it and it was like five and a half pounds or something and my grandpa was like oh that's cool like nobody cared about bass fishing back then like it just wasn't it wasn't like a big deal it wasn't like a five and a half pounder that's great i was like okay cool whatever and then the other thing my grandpa uh and again i don't know how your grandpa was justin but he would treat he would treat launching the boat like you were getting ready to send like a rocket ship into 
into outer space. Like it was such a huge undertaking. Like it was so, it was so difficult and like, it took so long and like, well, I got to, you know, we're at the resort now, but now I got to drive over to the launch and then I got to, I got to back the boat down and I got to get it off the trip. It was like such a huge thing where it's like now, you know, it's like tournament fishermen launching a boat and trailering a boat is like a two minute process at most. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, but I remember back yeah. then it was such a big <laughs> ordeal to get the boat in the water. Oh, it was a monster ordeal. My grandpa yeah. was the same way, you know, and, and mainly due to, uh, you know, roller trailers, yeah, um, yeah. which, you know, they're still, <laughs> they're still around, but, uh, you don't see a ton of them anymore, but yeah, my grandpa had the knee boots that came out and, you know, they had, a, you know, <laughs> the knee boots had a special yeah. place in the boat. That's where yeah. the knee boots were. And, you know, those would go, come on and, you know, and this was, you know, musky fishing with, with him. So, you know, it was always like, it was always an event to go, you know, it was like, it's, <laughs> it's cold and, you know, the, you got the 50 foot rope, you know, like, yep. you know, you push the boat off and then somebody's got to grab it. Grandma's got to grab it at the dock. Like, yeah, it was a, <laughs> it was definitely yeah. an event to do that, you know, yeah. and now you just take it for granted when, you know, you can, yeah, you can get unloaded in, in seconds, you know, yeah, seconds. But, I mean, yeah literally yeah. 15 seconds back around hit the brake back up yeah. come back to the dot whatever yeah. yeah and back then it was like such a big thing my grandpa would be gone for like two hours and he'd come back to the resort with the boat in the water i'm like good yeah. lord <laughs> yeah yeah but that's what that's just what they didn't know any different you know um yeah. you know this this was a lot i mean man this is you know i feel like a old guy and happy birthday nate um but you don't, Appreciate you, don't, it. you don't quite have me yet i'm a couple years older than you um <laughs> So, but if you, it's a, it was a long time ago. I mean, that's, you know, yeah. pushing 25 years ago yep. uh, when we were doing that. So, I mean, completely different time, it you is. know, and, and nobody knew anything about that. There was an easier way to do, to, you know, launch boats or to land yeah. boats or to, um, at, well, and fishing too, you know, I mean, yeah. this, this was so long ago too, um, you know, and there'll be some people up North here that remember these times. I mean, um, one of my grandpa's good uh fishing buddies um back then that we would go with sometimes too um this was back in the day when like it was okay to eat muskies yeah dude so, yeah uh th those times are, are so far gone that that might yeah. be kind of a shock to some people but yeah like, just no. saying that right now yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean i i remember seeing that you know a 50 inch muskie you know, on the, on the table, cutting yeah, steaks, stringer, it, yep. you know, like, and they, you know, it was just, a, it was just, you know, why it was just what you did, you know, and th nobody questioned anything, you know, yeah. it was like, if, if you caught yeah, a keeper sure. musky, um, you were keeping it, you were not, yep. you were not turning it loose. And back then, you know, on a uh, 50 inch, uh, you know, or a 49 or a 50 inch musky, like a minimum, that was not common where it is today. Like you go to any of these lakes now and it's uh, anywhere from probably 45 to a 50 inch size limit before you yep. can keep it. Back then it was like 32 to 34 <laughs> yeah. inches. So <laughs> if you caught a 38 inch muskie, it's coming back. It was going yeah. to the pot. It's yeah. probably going on the wall too. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. The actual skin mount. Yeah. yeah. I don't know yeah. if you can see this. Hold on. Let me, let me try to adjust this camera. Hold on. So right there, you can kind of see it uh, oh, above. Yeah. There's a, there's like a four pound crappie. Neither one of these fish that I catch, I bought these both at like uh, antique shops. But then there's a muskie that's got to be like 34, maybe. It's an old skin mount. It's all yellow and nasty, and that's literally why I bought it. Uh, was just because it was so old school, and it reminded me as a kid. Because you're right, I, you, you catch a decent muskie, everybody's keeping it. You're getting a full blown mount made. It's no such thing as like a replica mount back then. But yeah, totally different world, man, for sure. Nate, did you ever fish muskie or anything like that coming up? I know you're like a catfish guy, but no, yeah, yeah. Growing up, that that was it. Like we we just catfished and catfished, and we would pan fish for bait for catfish. I mean, that was that was really <laughs> it, you know. Yeah, <laughs> there was no, yeah, there was no kind of in between. Uh, okay. Like we, we, when I grew up, we were we were always camping. Like we'd go out and we, we, we set these campsites. We'd be there for you know a week or two at a time. And uh, I remember kind of just like you guys are talking about with like the boat, the boat ramps, and and yeah. that we like as a kid, we never have, we never had boats like ever. Um, mm. I, I, I just, I, 
can distinctly remember my first like fishing out of a boat adventure uh but we used to always like go down anytime we saw somebody back in a, a boat down we'd go down to the ramp and just just sit back like me and my, Whoa, my two little brothers yeah boat. yeah we just watch them like man it must be nice having a boat like <laughs> man, let's see how let's see how they put it in let's see how deep you know in the water they're gonna yeah. have to get let's yeah you see think anybody's gonna rope. slip and fall? Yeah, you think anybody's yeah. gonna slip and fall? Like, yeah, how long is it gonna take them to hoist the boat back to the you know to the shore so, so that they crazy. can get on it? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty wild. But yeah, uh, I remember, dude. I remember too, like going to the ramp. I remember specifically on Round Lake and then on Upper Eau Claire. Um, my grandpa, like I said, would take an hour, and all the other dudes at the ramp, nobody was upset because that's how long yeah. it took everybody I, like yeah, everybody yeah, took a month case, to put their yeah. boat in the do y'all remember uh justin you remember that commercial what was it uh altera maybe when they launched that mincota altera like the self-deploying and then like the dude like backed his boat up and then hit the altera boat and then like parked it at the, at the dock you remember that oh yeah, yeah. like the self yeah. what like that was such a mind-blowing thing back, yeah. and nobody really even does that but yeah that was such a big deal back in the day when that commercial dropped yeah. like, did you see that yeah, nobody does that for good reason too. Not, not that it doesn't work, but yeah. you know, you, you don't you don't want to be the one guy that it doesn't work for. I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm surprised they kind of led with that for marketing. You know, we talked. I mean, that's a long time ago too now, but you know, they kind of led yeah. with that for marketing where they did that, and we we're like, "Geez, man, like you you certainly can do that, but." You better you better be certain that that's gonna work for you. Yeah, and look, dude, yeah. those those when I worked at Shields for that little bit of time, um, we had so many because I worked in the the service department. We had so many of those trolling motors come in where the deploy thing got jacked up. It would go like halfway and then stop, like all. So you go to back up your boat in front of a bunch of people and you hit the button and it doesn't deploy and your boat just floats off into like the <laughs> other side of the lake. Just, just keeps on rolling. <laughs> she gonna be awful. Yeah. Yeah, hop out of your truck and try and swim it down or something. But uh, hey, so can we back up just a little bit, Justin? How did you, um, I'm always interested. So you said you've been fishing derby since you were 20, 21, whatever. H how did you hear about fishing bass tournaments and, and what made you want to start doing that? Um, you know, I don't know what the actual moment was, but um, I do know that, you know, so I went to, I was in tech school. Um for uh heating and air conditioning okay and uh i made i made a pretty good friend there a couple of pretty good friends there um that are still you know best friends to this day but anyways it was like our second year of school and i don't know how we you know we were real avid fishermen together and and i don't know how we came across um i don't know how we came across these the bass tournaments, but it was the bills and bears, uh, circuit WTC was, so it was called Wisconsin bass, uh, tournament circuit. Okay. Um, or Wisconsin team circuit at uh, Wisconsin team circuit, I think is, yeah, that's what it was. You know, they had two divisions, bills and bears. Uh, okay. so it was like one of the original circuits, uh, um, awesome. from that long ago. Um, so, so we just discovered it on, I, th I think it was just online. We just basically just discovered it online somehow. Um, and just decided like, Hey man, like, and we, we, we kind of joke about it to this day. It's still kind of funny. Um, you know, we, we were like, yeah, we can do that. I mean, um, we catch bass all the time. Right. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, we've been, we've been fishing together now for a couple of years. Like, man, we love it more than anybody we know. And I mean, we can catch, we can catch fish. That's not a problem. So yeah. let's, let's try it out. Like, let's, let's do it. That, that would be something new for us. So, so we, we decided to do that. We sent in our entry fees. We just got in that year. It was like the last spot. Awesome. And, uh, so that we headed up to, uh, this is the part we always still make fun of. We headed <laughs> up to, uh, uh, back when Gander Mountain was around. Oh yeah. And, uh, we headed up to Gander Mountain cause we were going to, we were prepping for the tournament season, you know? Yep. and uh what we which we've never done before so we get <laughs> we, we get up there and we spent about an hour in gander mountain and we had i don't know i mean we had like a couple handfuls of tackle of worms <laughs> and stuff you yeah. know like you know just a few bags you know and we we're i mean but we we really went through and we were like all right, we're good. Like we've yeah. got it now, you know, like whole like, season, a couple of handfuls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And we, uh, yeah. And we, we went and, uh, 
uh, fished our first tournament, um, which, you know, typically in this story, you'd say you went and fished your fish, your first tournament. You think you're going to catch them um, because you've caught fish your whole life or whatever. And then you really get your, you know, uh, you, you just really get your ass kicked on it. And it's like, right. yeah, we actually kind of didn't, we, we, we did. Okay. I don't know that we cashed a check, but it was close. Okay. Um, and then after that tournament, we never even, I don't think we caught a limit the entire year. <laughs> Dang. So yeah, it was just like, we, you know, one of them things, you know, you really, you know, you're just, you know, you're just young and kind of ignorant of what's going on and, and, uh, go up and get a bunch of what you think is a bunch of tackle. And then, uh, you know, you think, you think you got her made and then you, you can't, you know, I mean, it was literally every single tournament we were going, we just could not believe that people were catching limits every tournament so you know that's i mean and I, i'm sure i mean everybody i'm sure everybody's got stories like that in their first yeah. couple of years of tournament fishing so oh, I mean, that's sure. all that's yeah, that's how it was for us and then it, i mean it was that way um i think the next year like i fished um i think it was the next year or the year after that i'm not sure but it was really early on i actually ended up fishing um uh, by myself uh because i because so the one thing that we accomplished in the first year was i was you know you're bitten by the bug yeah so you know it was like you know foot on the gas um everything bass fishing now for yeah. you know, life love that and yep, uh, absolutely. yeah it was so i went and uh i ended up getting a bass boat um what was it? What, what what did you fish out of that first year? I'm curious. The first year was a Crestliner fish hawk. It was like a okay. 17, 1750 fish hawk. Yeah, right on. Um, yeah. Single console. So we got, you know, we we took off last and or close to last in that first tournament. And uh, boy, tr- driving through all them boat wakes, you know, at the, you know, when everybody else is, you know, is leaving, <laughs> yeah. it was like, you know, I ended up on the floor. You know, just he was he was barely scared. hanging on and you know <laughs> we were we were pretty wide-eyed by the time we got to where we were going and going man what did we get ourselves into just frazzled that's it was awesome. pretty intimidating yeah. you know um so yeah so then I, you know just um you know after that you know like i said I, I fished um that tournament partner ended up um you know, he ended up going a different way and took a break from tournament fishing. So I fished by myself for, I think it was a year and a half. Okay. And that, that was really tough. You know, I, I, boy, man, I, you know, I, I got my butt kicked a lot, a sure. lot. I mean, zeros and just, I mean, a lot of zeros, um, just learning like learning uh by like the process of elimination basically sure you know not knowing anything and just i mean just just you know getting your butt kicked and then just being like well just don't do that again okay that didn't work yeah yeah yeah. you know yeah it was a lot of that before um really started understanding what was going on in in the fishing world so that was that was a long time ago you know so that was you know, 15 to 17 years ago. Wow. So, when'd you get your, uh, when'd you get your first double? Yeah. Oh, that was, um, I don't know, probably, probably two or three, probably three years, three years, maybe no, maybe no longer than four. Okay. Um, um, with the original tournament partner that I had, um, and so that, that was always kind of a special one that we yeah. talked about once in a while. Cause it was, it was like a, um, kind of a constellation bracket tournament, like last chances back when you had to qualify to get into like, um, the championships, like mm-hmm. actually yeah. had to qualify. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we didn't qualify throughout the t- you know, the team of the year standings throughout the year. And then we, but we, what we did qualify for was basically a second chance tournament it was like a constellation brag like the winner of that gets to go to the championship oh, okay. so we fished that and i don't know if it was maybe like 15 boats or something something small yeah um and we just happened to just walk into them just kind of stumble into them That's and, awesome. uh, and had a great day had a really fun day yeah, and ended up winning it and it was 
that's that's that is one thing too you, you know you never you'll never forget that you know no yeah. matter how young or old you are you never forget that like yeah, there is oh, that yeah, feeling sure. that it's like the feeling you've never felt and it doesn't matter the tournament either oh absolutely it doesn't matter if it's the if it's a you know a 50 boat tournament or your you know 16 boat club derby if you've never won a tournament before and you win that whatever tournament that is it yep. is like it's just something you just oh it's the best yeah yeah you can't if you just bottle that yeah. up and just take a shot of that every once in a while you'd be just happy <laughs> living you know yeah for yeah. sure yeah my, so, i love the uh i love the feeling when you're because you know this this isn't this isn't major league fishing there's no it's not bass there's no bass track so you don't really know how everybody else did and then you get back to the weigh-in and you know, maybe you have a good idea of how you did or you weighed in and then the next guys come in to weigh in and you're higher than them and the next guys come in and all oh, you're higher than like that little nervousness. And then to me, at least I'm like, oh, my gosh, I, I we actually have a chance here. Like I have a chance here. What you know, like that feeling that nervous, excited, dude, that's the best, man. That is yeah. very adrenaline for sure. Oddly, and you wouldn't really think of adrenaline and fishing, but it is. It's like this nervous excitement that just, yeah, it's the best. Yeah, you can't explain it and it, you can't. I don't mean, it, well, you can duplicate it. I mean, there's, there's some like, you know, a pretty, um, you know, avid bow hunter too. And yeah. just deer and deer hunter, uh, white tailed deer hunter. Yeah. And it, that is, that is a very, very similar feeling to that too. When you, sure. yep. when you happen to be successful doing that after, you know, a long time, a long, long drought of that, you know, and that's, that's, a, it's a lot like, well, for me at any anyways, it was a lot like tournament fishing, you know, yeah. it wasn't a real success successful deer hunter um so I hunted a long time before i before i ended up you know harvest harvesting a nice buck and that can that's that's tournament fishing i mean you can go a long time without winning one you know you can do and you yeah. can even do well in a lot of tournaments but to win one is is i mean it's a different thing it's yeah. just a completely different feeling and it's it doesn't really matter where you're at it's like it's hard to win tournaments you know it just really is so yeah, it's, it's, it's a great feeling though, you know, and there's, there's different feelings too, you know, there's that, you know, where it's like, you didn't think you had the fish and, and you kind of get surprised. And then there's the other feeling where, you know, you had a magical, magical day and you kind of just know, like, yep. there's just, there's no, there's no, there's no way that we didn't win, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. That's not very often or, or, sure. or maybe, maybe hardly ever, you know, yeah. um, certainly hasn't happened to us very often, but there's been a couple of times we just knew it was a special, special, like an extra special day. Yep. And so that's, a, that's another thing too. Cause you, some, you know, when you, uh, if you know, when you win a tournament, it's, <clears throat> There's, yeah, there's that sometimes you, you really have, you, you had an, you had a good day, but you really don't know, you know, so yeah, you have to wait yep. to get in and then you're like, you just recalled, you know, you're kind of watching each one, you know, and you're like, man, we've got a shot or, you know, yeah. this is going to happen, you know, but then there's other ones where there is no doubt you're having the day of all days. Right. And yeah. that is, that is something because you can have that feeling out on the water. Yeah. And that is where it's really special. Agreed. Like when you know, yeah. you know, that next hook set and it's like, oh man, this is, they just keep getting bigger yeah. and they, yeah. they kind of get like unbelievably bigger, you yeah. know? Yeah. And it's like, you're, you kind of get that like in the moment feeling where, you know, it's like, it's like when people say like the good old days, you know, like, yeah. ah, I wish, I wish I knew it when it was the good old days. Right. Well, you know that you know what's happening like right then and there it's like man yeah. we are having the day that we're going to talk about for like the next 10 years <laughs> yeah yeah for, like, for sure like so there's 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 different feelings within winning a tournament but it's still nothing nothing is better than that the first one yeah Especially, I think you know when you've I been trying so. to figure it out you know I, I was gonna say i think a lot of it has to do with what you mentioned um there's not many sports that you lose in more than bass fishing. You know, like if, if you subscribe to the idea, like, like Nate's favorite movie, Talladega Nights, if you're not first, you're last. Like if you didn't win it, I mean, even if you get second or you're in the money, you still didn't win the tournament, you know? And so like, there's not too many sports you like lose more than bass fishing. Um, so then when you do win one, it's like, 
holy hell, like, I can't believe this is action. I was just going to say, Nate yeah. and I, I, we don't hug, but I think we've hugged more in a bass boat than we've, <laughs> you know, like when you, when you net that five pounder or yeah. you get that, that one in the boat that like, you know, you got the sink, you're tossing a square bill on some riprap and you get just a barely like barely one hook in the side, so whatever and you get them in the boat. Like, yeah, it's, it's a whole different level of excitement and like, yeah. Shock without a doubt. And, yeah. Yeah. Cause it's, I mean, it, it's, um it, it might just look like fishing you know to most people and you know right. we all know you know when we talk to our friends that you know um maybe aren't don't really understand term of fishing you know they all think it's just you know just fishing you know you just, right. go yeah. Yeah. just you know kick back and have a good time or whatever and relax um but tournament fishing is really hard like it's it really is. hard it's really taxing mentally it is um you know throughout the day throughout the year you know like and if you're um, the longer you go struggling and struggling and struggling and then maybe have a decent one and then you struggle some more and then there goes that year and then you go into the next year and you, you know, you struggle some more and maybe have a good finish and then all of a sudden you win, you know, I, at least for me, like the first thing I always think about is the, I always think about the start, like 20 years ago you know like mm. that's what i always think about like as soon as that happens it's just like and now that i've like now that i've been doing this for a long time it's like man it's just if if people only knew you know like 20 years ago like how you know or 15 or 20 years ago however long it's been like just the amount of work that it took and the amount of lashings oh, that we took you know yeah um absolutely like man it's just it is it is work because i mean in bass in tournament fishing it's really not even bass it's just tournament fishing like you almost always lose yep. yeah you know it's it's almost always a losing proposition almost yep. like and i'm not you know i mean yes you can make some money in the you know top five or top you know second place or whatever but you know with, like you said you know it's like you, you're either first or you're last when it comes to tournament fishing and it's a, yeah, it's a sport where you're, you have way better odds of losing when you launch the boat in the morning than you <laughs> yeah, do winning, way like better. for sure, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So yeah, Absolutely. it's, but that's what keeps us going. You know, I, yeah, I guess yeah. I don't, I don't know what keeps us going, but it, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's like I said, it's somewhere between fifteen and twenty years and and counting. I, you know, I haven't 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 stopped, haven't taken a break or yeah. anything. You know, I like I don't know what I would do without it now. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it is. It is, is the best. Yeah, for sure. Is there anything you can think of, like, like mindset wise that uh, you kind of like carried from like first win into the next few or, uh, you know, anything like that, that, you know, some of our listeners might be able to, to kind of take in? Yeah. Um, you know, from the first one, I don't know. You know, we just we, we didn't know. We didn't even know what we were doing. I mean, we could barely. You know, I feel like we could barely cast back then. So, right. but still, you know, we had the thing is we had a we had a like a great like a magical day. So it was like, oh man, you know, if we're gonna if you're gonna win tournaments, like you have to have like you have to catch the snot out of them. Like, yeah, you have to catch yeah. them, which is not necessarily true. Like, you don't have to catch a lot of fish to win tournaments, you know. But, um, you know, there is. I mean yes every every time you know so every time you do win one you do start understanding what it takes to 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 win one from a like a decision making process yeah that's and it. that's that's the yeah. biggest thing is um is is reflecting on your on the decisions that you made the last time um you won or the last time you had not even won this is the last time you had a like a monumental finish like a like a good finish you know like yeah um you can re regardless of any other factors that doesn't matter um you know about about the baits you're using the weather um what boat you went out none of that matters as much as the decisions that were made that day and you can always reflect and go back into that day and find two or 
five or eight or 10, you know, whatever. I mean, sometimes it's a lot, but you can always find like two or three decisions that you made as a team or, you know, throughout the day that was like, that is, that's what did it. Yeah. You know, that those decisions yeah. are what did it. Um, and when you start learning that, you start compounding that throughout more tournaments, what those decisions start being, um, you start having more confidence in them mm -hmm. and they stop. Um, they're, they're not as likely to be like guesses anymore. Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, they start off as guesses or, yep, you totally. know, um, you know, or maybes or, uh, you know, who knows, you know, that kind of stuff. But after over time, um, if you really do a good job of thinking and reflecting on it and, and discipline at that, uh, those start to be, those start to become actual decisions. And, um, you kind of know what decisions to make at the right time. Um, you know, what, once you, once you really start being confident, like you really start to understand like how to make a decision on yeah. the water that yeah. day where, where it doesn't have to be a, a crap shoot, you know, all the time. There's a couple things where you can say, you know, this is, uh, you know, you know, now this is what we need to do, or now, uh, we need to go over here or, um, we need to target, you know, spawning fish instead of pre-spawning fish, you know, stuff like that, where, you yeah. know, like there's a decision that's made, um, and it's not really a gamble any as much. It yeah, still might not good. work out. It's like you thought yeah. it's not, you know, there's no guarantees, yeah. but it but just become, they, yeah, they just become more, um, um, more, you know, of like, I know what to do in this situation Absolutely. instead of, you know, instead of just a gamble, I guess. Yeah, so that, that's yeah. what I would take from each, um, each time, you know, um, you can really do that for every tournament too. Yeah. Um, you know, which is what I would recommend to anybody in tournament fishing for anything. It's just analyze your decisions and no matter what, and, and you'll probably be more successful, I guess, in the future. You know, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think everybody's yeah. felt that feeling too. I, I'm sure you've been there too, Nate. Um, referencing back to Justin talking about bow hunting, there's been so many times um, when I've been in the woods and I'm thinking to myself, like, is this really the stand I should be in, or like, you know, should I make a move back to this? blind or whatever and the more you get to know those woods on which time of year and what wind is blowing or whatever you start to make a much more calculated choice as opposed to like flipping a coin like ah maybe i'll go yeah. shallow or what you know yeah. like it's like that sort of putting of it, the yeah. pieces together and you know making a like like justin was saying a more calculated a more informed decision as opposed to like hey let's go try that um yeah. Justin, give me give me your thoughts on uh, tournament practice. How much weight do you put into to practice? Um, as as far as if you're looking to win a tournament, you have to practice. Like you you have to practice. You you are um, you're just not going to win. I'm not going to say you're not going to win a tournament, you're, but yeah. you're not going to win tournaments um, if you do not practice. Yep. Um, and that's what you know, I was very heavy into that. I'm not so much anymore because of, you know, some other, just other life stuff that happens sure. to all of us, yep. you know, and, okay. um, not that it's any less in the term or the practicing is not any less important. Like, um, I do have more history in lakes nowadays in our small area. So that uh -huh. helps out. But if you want to win tournaments, you have to practice, you have to, and yep. you have to practice a lot. Um, you, you have to be out there more than anybody else that's fishing it. So that's, I mean, it's really simple. Like you can, I've always boiled it down to, um, you know, practice and decision-making, um, you know, or I would just say preparation, like preparing for a tournament is way more important than any bait you could tie on sure. or any, uh, you know, any way to set up your boat or any of these, you know, colors or any of these other variables, mm -hmm. you have to get out there and you have to be, you have to prepare, you have to practice. Yep. I mean, so it would be, 
I mean, it was pretty usual, like three, four days of practice for one tournament, you know, years ago for me, it's not that anymore, but yeah, you know, if that's what it used to, and that would be, um, here's, here's another key thing too, because a lot up here, it's, um, the, well, it, they're almost all team tournaments. Right. Um, so both people, both guys, both team members have to go practice and a lot. They need to both put in the same amount of time. Mm. So back, you know, years ago, I mean, it would be, um, you know, me and my tournament partner, you know, we'd put three, I'd put three days in, they'd put three or four days in, you know, that's seven days on the water um, for one tournament. And there's a lot, a lot of guys that are, are, are not doing that. You know, a yeah, lot of guys would sure. get out for yeah. one day if they have time. You know, the way to think of that is, um, is, uh, so, you know, if I put four days of practice in and you put two, um, you know, your day two is no different than my day two of practice. Sure. We learned, we've learned the same things, but now I've got day three and I've got day four. So I've taken whatever I've learned and I've refined it to day three and then I've refined it to day four. So now mm. I'm a couple steps ahead. That's a good way of looking at it. Yeah. Two it in, is good. Right? Yeah. So there's no, and there's nothing you can do. Um, there's just nothing you can do to regain that. Sure. All right. Yeah. So you're right. So, so, yeah. so do you ahead. think, yeah. Do, do you think it's, uh, it's like directly the, the practice prior to the tournament or, or are you say, or do you think like the practice in general, uh, is equaling like time on the water, which is making you a better angler? Like what, like, like, well, does that, that yeah, like I that think practice there's... directly or, I think it's, I think it's both. There's, there's two things uh-huh. working for you there too. There's the time on the water, which in, in my eyes applies to the future time on the water applies right. to the future, you know, next year, this time, the year after that, this time. Um, yeah, yeah. but, but the prep for the tournament is right here, right now. Um, okay. I'm getting ahead of everybody. I'm getting ahead of, of the rest of the field that is still focusing on seasonal transitions and trying to figure out where they're at. Yeah. I'm, I'm well beyond you're that right. now. Yeah, you're way you past, know. you're refining and yeah, I'm and well beyond, and... you know, you know, wondering if they're spawning or not. Um, I don't have to look anymore. I'm already, I've already got, you know, eight beds marked um, with the first fish that are spawning. Right. You can, you can't do that if you don't practice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If you don't, sure. if you don't prepare, yeah. it's impossible. And so, so I will, and, and a lot of people who are listening to this will know, will know this too. So, you know, I sound pretty, I might sound pretty confident because of this because I, I fished against uh, Pat Schlapper for, you know, all these years, like literally yeah. all these years. Um, so, you know, I've always, or not always, there's been a lot of times where I've been two days behind um pat um and that might mean i put six days in and he put eight um but it doesn't matter two days behind is two days behind sure yeah and you can never get them you can never get those back right so um so i do i do know that that is a that is a like a crucial factor of for uh doing well in tournaments but for sure for winning tournaments yeah, you, I like you that. have if there's if there's somebody in the field that's practicing more than two days, um, then you need to practice more than two days. Like you, you just have to if you want to have yeah. a shot to win. Yeah, so, I like that. So I, I, I so if you couldn't tell, I probably put almost like all my weight <laughs> in that basket. No, I think that makes <laughs> sense. Happened, I, you know? well, it seems uh, to me yeah. like when you're fishing a tournament, um, I can't remember who we asked. Like, what's a what's a what's a piece of advice you give tournament anglers? I can't remember who it was, a pro, and they were like, "Well, find something that you're confident in." You know, they they spoke to the idea that confidence is so important. I would assume for you, Justin, that that amount of practice directly translates into the amount or the concentration of 
confidence, right? Like, cause if you know, like to, to use your numbers, if, if you know that you've pre-practiced eight days and your next competition, you know, Lonnie or somebody else who's a stick, they got six days. Does that extra practice make you that much more confident? For sure. And do you think that that yeah. confidence really does play like that? I can't remember who it was that was saying yeah. that, but do you think it does make that much of a difference while you're out there? Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, for sure it does. Um, but your confidence has got to also line up because you can be confident, um, you know, in a technique to, you know, really yeah. comfortable, you know, and it's, you know, boy, I really love doing this or that. But it might not line up to where you're, where you're fishing, right? And especially when you get down south, like, you know, a lot of this stuff up here, the lakes are smaller. Um, just fishing's a lot different up here. You can't just, um, you just can't kind of run and gun and follow your, uh, follow your nose and put together a nice bag up here. You like, sure. you got to You got to know spot on spot type stuff. Yeah. You got to know exactly what the fish are doing right now. And, and like, like I said, there's times where, you know, uh, the entire field would swear, you know, that there's, there's nothing spawning. Right. And then, you know, but you've, you've found the first five or eight of them that are spawning. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, so, I mean, you're going against the grain there, right. You're going against, you know, typical seasonal, you know, transitions or whatever. Right. Yeah. But that's where practice is. It's, you know, practice is your, um, you know, I guess, I guess I would say like practice is your cheat code um, yeah, in a lot yeah. of, in a lot of situations, right. Where you're, uh, yeah. you're, you're, um, it's like, it's like, have, it's like having, um, it's like having a live scope before there was live scope, you know, like that's, that's what practice it was yeah. for, you know, like the more time you spend, um, figuring out what, what the, what the lake is doing, what the fish are doing, yeah. Uh, the more you could refine that and catch them in a way that was not like a common way to catch them. Sure. You know, that was, it was kind of going against the grain a little bit where it's like, Oh, you're catching them that way. They shouldn't be even be out there yet. Right. Or they shouldn't yeah. be on beds yet, or they shouldn't be, you know, you're basically catching them the way you shouldn't be catching them. Yeah. You know, yeah. you shouldn't be catching them. Right. So that's what, that's what practice, you know, that's what, that's what it does for you. Like I, said, I don't know if it, you know, anymore. I mean, times change and everything changes and I haven't, I've just been, you know, I've, I've just been part of the, you know, the other guys now where I don't, I just don't have the time. I shouldn't say I don't have the time. I, I, Cause I always hate when people say that, like, I don't make yeah. the time. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's all priorities now. Yeah. We don't have the time. Right. Yeah. Everybody yeah. Used to, yeah. We, people used to tell us that, you know, boy, but it must be nice to be out here. And I was like, man, I had, I had to make the time to be out here. Right. I sacrificed it didn't a just lot happen. Of yeah. stuff to be out here, you know? And I just, I have just not made time to do that yeah. recently, but yeah, if you want to, uh, any, any, any young, young guys listening or somebody new to the sport and you want to try to, um, make your mark, I, that's what I would say is, is get out there when, everybody else is not out there and you're gonna you are gonna uh, vault yourself way ahead of them when it comes to the standings for sure Dang it. yeah that's great advice man so, that's really good. Is, yeah yeah well well put for yeah. sure nate do you have any more uh tournament yeah. specific questions for justin i kind of want to transition into uh tournament director stuff yeah no i think i think this is a good uh good time to make that transition good i can't transition so yeah. um how long have you been, Justin? How long have you been the president of the Chippewa Valley Bass Attack? Uh, I think that was, I think that was pre-COVID. That's kind of okay. how I measure anything now. Is it like, is it pre-COVID right. or yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like I don't, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I think it, I think it was twenty, maybe 2018, 2019, somewhere in there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, which is you know the the club is. Uh, boy you know and i was really late to that too the club setting i had no idea what a club was um yeah. <laughs> i had no idea you know i heard, I'd heard about it but i was you know i started off fishing kind of these bigger tournaments you know i don't know what you call them some people call them like jackpot tournaments or whatever sure. just like just like money tournaments right you know there's a championship too but like like you you know, there's no qualification, you know, there's no road, you know, to anywhere. Yeah. 
And so I was, it was really lost on me, like what a club was until I joined our, the club now, um, the Chippewa Valley Bass Tech. And, I, and immediately I was like, wow, this is, this is pretty neat. You yeah, know, it was, was a little, fun. it was a little shock because it was, you know, low, very low entry fees, very low prize money. Um, so it was, it was kind of received as like a, like a kind of a low key type, you know, tournament, you know, sure. like, which was, which okay. was great, which is fine. Um, but it was, you know, I had to kind of figure that out. And then once I fished it for, um, I think my second year of fishing it, um, that's when I, uh, got voted in for, uh, the president position. But, um, you know, that is, that is something that I should have been doing when I was 20 years old. Like it's been my first tournament has been fishing a club. Yeah. Like that's, that's probably the biggest thing I've learned through uh, this uh, through running a club <clears throat> is that is what you should be doing when you are trying to get your feet wet on uh, you know hundred percent yeah I completely on what's going agree. on like yeah. um, it is a perfect situation for for new uh, new fishermen yeah. like big time and it's so fun like getting to know people and just the relationships you form yeah it's so stinking fun yeah yeah it's awesome. Um, you know, it's, um, it's a little less, um, it's a, it's clubs can be competitive too, but it's a little less competitive than what, you know, like a, like a local circuit, um, type event. Um, but, but it is, it is kind of competitive too, in a way that like, um, you heard me mention Pat, uh, Pat Schlapper earlier. I mean, you know, Pat used to fish our club too, and he used to fish it a long time ago and he's made his way through the ranks and, um, qualified to fish the elite series through it. Yep. yep. Um, and you know, the Bassmaster classic through it. So it's like, a, I mean, it's a big, it's a big deal, but, um, so, so it can be competitive too. You know, it's not that it's not competitive and every, it's not like a, you know, a beer league, uh, type thing, you know, like yeah. you don't <laughs> yeah. let the, the low entry fees fool you, you know, I mean, it can be competitive too. Yeah. Um, but it's a great way to get started. It's typically uh, lower field sizes, which is mm-hmm. which is key when you're getting started because it totally. opens up the amount of lakes you can go to. Um, you know, these bigger tournaments, you're kind of forced into going to big lakes. And mm-hmm. if you're new um, and your first tournament is on the Mississippi River, you know, your, your head might be spinning a little bit. Absolutely. Um, trying to wonder where yeah. to go, but. So, so I would say that's, that's definitely the advantage of, of, um, starting out in a club setting. Yeah. I, uh, one thing too, that a lot of people don't consider is even just like the not fishing parts of, of fishing a tournament, meaning like I'll, I'll never forget the first tournament I ever fished, which was in, um, Texas, um, the morning of like the launch, I, I think there was 75 boats or 80 boats or something at this derby and uh just the launch line of people like loading in and what you know if you don't re- if you've not been around that it's sort of like holy crap it's a little intimidating almost you know and on a local level if you're in a club with 30 boats or some boats will do or some clubs will do that thing where they keep it under what is it in wisconsin under 20 where they don't have to pull permits and stuff it's just so much more chill you know it's a lot it's a lot less intimidating it's more about the you know, it's more about the fishing than the some of the scary parts of it. Um, Justin, what are some parts of being a president of a bass club um, that maybe aren't always so fun or that maybe people wouldn't think of, like scheduling or dealing with complaints or emails or what's that look like for you? Yeah, I would say that that's, I guess it'd be like, like being the president or running, running just about anything, you know, like, the com- <clears throat> yeah, the complaint department's never fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, you know, it's, um, you know, that's the beauty of the club, of a club level, though, is it's, you're, you're not really, um, it's not a dictatorship, right? So, so it's, uh, um, or at least, I don't know if it is or not, but at least that's not how we treat it, It, you know, in our club. um, Typically, when you have a president, you're just kind of uh, um arranging things and or directing traffic is how i yeah, kind of, kind of a facilitator right? yeah so 
you know, um, so, so, so it makes, so, so it does make it a lot easier because if we do have some scheduling issues, um, or payout issues or anything like that, like everything goes to a vote, you know, um, there's very, very few things that are just decided. And if they are, they're usually decided by the, you know, by the, the officers collectively, right? So you're kind of making yeah. a decision, but it's really not, um, you know, it's, if, if you're, if you're proactive, um, which, which I'm used to that, you know, and, you know, if, if you're, if you run a business or uh, something like that, it's really no different than that. It, sure. Other than, I mean, it's definitely easier than running a business, but it, it still is kind of running a business a little bit, you know, especially the bigger your club gets, the more, people you have, the more maybe opinions you have or scheduling conflicts you have, that kind of stuff. Um, but as long as you're, you know, as long as you're ahead of it, being proactive, um, it's, it, yeah, it's not, it's really not that big of a deal. You know, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't take a whole lot of time. You know, the, you know, when you're trying to get things set up the first year, when you're getting your spreadsheets and this kind of stuff set up and, you know, and me, I was late to the game with club. So I didn't, you know, I don't know what club dues were, or bass dues, or sure, you know, yeah. uh, bass nation this and bass. You know, I was like, I don't, I don't know any of this stuff. So it was, a, it was a learning curve. But now, it's just pretty. Um, you know, this year was the easiest year we've had so far as a start. Scheduling, picking lakes, um, all that stuff. Like we've had, well, we haven't had any hiccups yet this year. So, awesome. and that, you know, it's been five years now. So. So yeah, it's it's a uh, it's fun. It's definitely yeah. fun. I mean, I would recommend it if you're if you're passionate about the sport. Um, here's here's the other nice thing about the club: like you can just create a club. Yeah, you know? totally. Yeah. So yeah. you know, it if you you want to go create a club, you know, you know Jordan's you know Bass Masters, you know, right? Like yeah. you can do it. And you're yep. the president. So if you do like titles and you do want to be a president, you can go make one <laughs> like tomorrow if you wanted to. Yeah, that's a good um, idea. But that's great too because you only, you know, you only need I don't know what it is if it's like six boats or eight boats, something small. It, it might be more than that, but it's it's small. Like mm -hmm. you can just if you and your buddies want to start a club, go ahead, start that's a club. Cool. No problem. Yeah. Like no problem. Yeah, like, that's fun. Yeah. That is yeah. Yeah, so it's it's great. Um, yeah. What and would then, uh... and then, you know? Then you're in the mix. You know, you can. Um, you can go to state tournaments. You can go to, you can chance to qualify for uh, national tournaments or divisional yeah. tournaments. And, you know, whether you're, you have the skills to, to, or the desire to go on, it's still really neat, like showing up to a state tournament, you know, when um, you've been used to fishing 15 boat, you know, tournaments, you know, all summer and you show up to the state event and there's 80 or a hundred yeah. boats there. Yeah. It's really right. cool, you know. Yeah. It's really cool, especially yeah. if, if you've not done that before. It's like, it's pretty neat to to be able to do that, you know. And you're and you're more than likely you're doing it on a lake that is, um, you know, pretty close to you. Like you didn't have to travel ten hours to go for right. a big tournament. Like it's it's in your backyard most of the time, so you feel kind of com comfortable doing that. That's cool. But yeah, it's a it's great, man. I would I recommend it to anybody any. Anybody looking to um, check it out? It's it's a really like affordable way to just check out tournament fishing. Yeah, that's good. So, yeah, it's uh, great. What uh what what would you say as as president your most common complaint is? Like I said, there's there's always people that uh you know want this or want that. Like what what's the most common complaint you you would say you receive? Um. Well, the, the, probably the most common one I don't receive is probably about me, um, but I, I won't <laughs> receive any of those. <clears throat> but no, I'm the most common one is, 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 is definitely scheduling. Yeah, I was gonna say it's got to be calendar stuff. Scheduling, you know, it's yeah. not. And it's it's that would be the that would be the most common one with any tournament circuit because especially up in northern Wisconsin, summer's only so long. You right. only have so many yeah. weekends. And there's other tournament circuits. So yep. a lot of the, you know, there's only so many days that you can actually have a tournament, which is really, you might, if you're going to run six tournaments, 
and you get to looking at it, you might only have like eight days or nine days that you can actually run a tournament. So a lot of times you just have to go with that date and the odds of that working for, you know, um, well, if you have 30 boats at 60 anglers, you know, that's pretty tough. Yeah, that is. So yeah. that's definitely the most common, common complaint in scheduling sure. is trying to get that, get that figured out. Yeah. I think honestly, like, I think, um, I think the bass attack since I've been in it, um, has been awesome, super well scheduled, well ran pretty like non BS, not a bunch of all over the place stuff. Like even last year, the tournament, that Nate and I fished in the two day up on, uh, what, where was that? Um, fence Lake, uh, mm -hmm. lack of flannel yeah. or whatever, you know, that yeah. was kind of a weird one because of some of the native American regulations, like the tribal stuff. And so we had to have the weigh in over here and you couldn't have it over there. And I, I, I thought honestly, for some of the hurdles, I thought it went well. So I think you're doing a, I think you're doing a fine job, man. Yeah. And th that's an example of another, you know, just the other issues that you have to deal with that are just not, they're not tournament issues. They're just yeah. people issues. It's just, you know, you can't use this landing now. Right. Or, you know, well, going back into, you know, we ran tournaments through COVID times. Right. And there were some goofy rules there about yeah. what you could and couldn't do. So, I mean, so you have to make some of those decisions, you know, and I don't, not that anybody's really looking for any advice, I guess, but I would tell Maybe. somebody that like, um, just as a tournament director, like probably the hardest thing about a tournament director is making des decisions at the weigh in. Um, right. like you cannot, you can't ride any fences when you're, yeah. you yeah. know, when you're, when you're running a tournament at the tournament, like you have to, you have to make calls. You might have to DQ somebody. Um, you know, you, you might have to postpone it. You might have to do a fog delay. You might have to, you know, weather, other weather delays. Um, there's a lot of those things. So, like, now I'm thinking about this. That's probably the hardest part about just sure. running tournaments is is making those like game time decisions. Um, and the game time decisions are the ones that people are going to have a problem with. Here, yeah. some people are right because yeah. nobody thought about it it's just it's what we're dealt with right now and some people are going to be okay with it and some people aren't yeah but that that's probably the toughest part yeah that makes sense um a few <clears throat> months ago i think it was i can't remember uh we got a pretty cool opportunity to have uh jay yellis on our podcast and uh i don't know how much you know about jay yellis uh later on we had um Ken and Terry from the Big Bass Podcast, Ken Duke, and he said his words, I can't remember how he said it, Nate, but basically that Jay Yellis had, like when he left BASS to go to FLW or whatever before he came mm -hmm. back, you know, he was on route to be like KVD status just as far as how many wins and times in the money and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, yeah. dude is a stud and now he runs this thing called Cast for Kids. Um, it's like a... You know, like a nonprofit where you take kids with disabilities out fishing and, and that kind of thing. Have you guys ever talked about doing anything like that, Justin, for um, Chippewa Valley Bass Attack, like where it's not like a tournament thing, but it's like a community thing? Because sometimes like in Bassmaster Magazine, I'll read about that as well, not just cast for kids, but, you know, so-and-so bass club out of Chattanooga, Tennessee did a thing where they're giving away rods and reels to kids at a local lake. Or have you guys ever done that? Or have you ever thought about doing something like that? Um, we haven't since I've <clears throat> been, um, heading the club, but I want to say I heard something, uh, um, about them doing that may maybe maybe quite a while ago now. And I, I could be making that up, but I, I thought there was a, um, um, there was a youth, you know, and that might've been, um, you know, that might've been more of a BASS, um, uh, uh, youth direction back then. Mm. Um, but we, we've not, you know, it, it's not, not because we, you know, you know, we don't want to, or we're against anything like that, but there's, and there's, there's, uh, there's a ton of stuff like that, that you can yeah. do. I mean, tons yeah. and tons of it. Um, you just have to have, you have to have the manpower to do that. You know, sure. so that, that's just, that kind of crosses over into our, in, into our business. Um, you know, people, you know, looking for, um, you know, sponsorships or, you know, um, a lot of times dealers, 
you know, marine dealers will put on their own tournament, you know, mm-hmm. fishing tournament uh, uh, or a fishing contest for kids or something like that, right? But, um, you know, we used to do open houses, you know, big open house, you know, events, you know, and stuff like that. But it all comes down to like, you've got to have, um, you got to have the manpower to do it. You've, and yeah. you've got to have somebody um, leading it that is right, like, right. that's going to follow through with that. But you have to have, you have to have the uh, manpower to do it because you know, like me, I've got, you know, a full-time, you know, a couple full-time jobs, I feel like. Right. Uh, yeah. And anybody else out there running a club typically does. Um, so you have to have, you know, you, it doesn't matter necessarily what you want to do if you can't follow through and do it. So sure. But yeah, that's a great idea. Um, yeah. it's a, it's a great idea. Um, I mean, my philosophy for like the youth is like, Hey, come join our club. Yeah, um, seriously. You know, we've talked about that too, where it's like, basically if you are, uh, um, if you're under 18, uh, you can come fish our club for free. Oh, that's cool. So you can just jump in a boat nice. with somebody yeah. and come fish, you know, for free fish or not fish you can just come along if you want. But that was a, an effort to, you know, kind of promote that through either, you know, new fishermen or, mm-hmm. you know, younger fishermen. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've had that, you know, we have, you know, some of our, some of our people take their, you know, their kids, you know, or yep. something like that, or take somebody else's, you know, their friends, kids and take them with, um, I mean, that's, that's great. Yeah. I love it. Right on. I was yeah. just curious. Cause I think, I think with the whole like club thing, like you said, it, it, it's a smaller setting and you know, sometimes it can be more about than actual just tournaments. What were you going to say, Nate? Mm-hmm. No, I just, I just was thinking that that's a cool, you know, that's a cool idea. It was like, you know, under 18, you fish for free or being able to bring, you know, a, a child or, you know, something like that with the, you know, on tournament day, that, that, that's really neat. I, I think that, uh, that's something that other clubs should kind of look at doing. I think we've got, we've idea. got a couple clubs around here where they're like, I think their age limit is like 16. Um, and you know that, you know, I, I kind of understand that with like liability stuff, but like, yeah, that like you need to get kids into this environment, you know, earlier yeah. than that. I think, uh, you know, I think, I think there's a lot of good in, in doing so. So yeah, for sure. Also, Justin, so, you know, I'm not in Bass Attack this year because of my new job and whatever, but hopefully I'll be back in there like next year or something if there's an opening. And uh, yeah, I would be happy to if you if you think that's something you would actually want to do. Um, I've been like an event planner for my job before. Like I would totally line up something like that, like a cast for kids or a something sort of altruistic out in the out in the uh, community, because I think that's an awesome deal. But um, let's yeah. transition over. We'll, we'll hit you with a couple more things. I don't want to keep you up all night uh, or keep you on too long, man. Um, I do again from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for coming on, jumping on here. Absolutely. Um, yeah, for sure. So let's talk, uh, let's talk boat stuff, uh, for you as a part owner and, uh, manager of the boat center in Chippewa Falls. Uh, first off, not, not to go like, you know, Chip, boat center is not a sponsor of tackle and tacos. So we're not like wanting you to do this to s- serve two ends, but what is the boat center? What do you guys do? What's your specialty? What, uh, do you service boats? Do you do electronic stuff? Do you sell used boats? Do you give us the, give us the rundown on the boat center? Um, yeah, so we are, um, I, I think we started, I, I think it's 2009 is when it was established. There's a little great, I wasn't there yet. I was there in 2011. Um, I think it was established in 2009, 08 or 09, uh, somewhere in there. But we are, we've, we started out and we still are, um, I would say, uh, very different than uh, uh, a marine dealership um, in, in that we really only um, sell and cater to uh, the fishing crowd. Um, and really, you could say like avid fishermen, you know? Um, so we started out, you know, uh, we, well, we started out in 2009 with only selling one brand of boat, mm. um, which is not too uncommon, but it happened to be a fiberglass boat. And so that's very uncommon. 
to sell one brand of, of fiberglass boats, you know, so no pontoons, yeah. uh, no aluminum boats, no fishing boats, none of that stuff. You know, we were just, it was just Skeeter boats at the time. Yeah. Um, so, which is very, very, so fast forward to today, um, uh, we are still, we still cater to the serious fishermen, but we, mm. we've kind of chosen brands along the way that, um, align with, right. So like avid, avid, uh, avid fishermen, you know, the high performance fishing boats, I guess is what you, it was, is how you categorize it. Yeah. Um, so mm-hmm. yeah, we've got, you know, I mean, the majority of what we sell are fiberglass, uh, walleye boats actually, mm. um, which is a, a little bit of a shock to some people, you know, some people that know us locally uh, from the bass side, you know, they think we sell bass boats, you know, like yeah. a lot of, like that's what we're kind of where, you know, that's what we sell the most of, or the majority of, um, it's actually not even, not even close. Um, wow. here we, I mean, the majority is, is deep V walleye boats. Sure. Okay. So, um, so we do that, but yeah, we, I mean, we're a full line dealership. I mean, we've got, um, we've got Yamaha master techs, um, the highest certification you can get. We've got uh, Mercury certified techs. Um, we're working on Suzuki certified techs as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, I mean, we, we service basically anything, but, uh, and you know this Jordan, but the motor that's on the back of your, <laughs> uh, your boat, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, I do know that. Yeah. <laughs> which, which, which was a bummer to not be able to help you out with that, but yeah. it was, it's we your hands were tied uh, with that. So, well, the cool, okay. So just a, anybody listening to this. So what Justin is referring to is the greatest two stroke motor ever made, uh, the Avenue G tech or E tech G two, uh, <laughs> Which honestly, I was kind of joking when I said that, but like I'm looking over at it, it's a pretty bad of the bone motor for a two stroker. They just put all yeah. their eggs in the wrong basket right when it was about to go extinct. But anywho, to to uh, to the boat center's credit, um, you know, being in the bass attack and then reaching out to Justin, like, dude, help me, my motor's acting weird, whatever. Um, and then I talked to a bunch of the techs at. Um, boat center what i really respected about that place is they were like dude we could work on it but like it's not our specialty you'd be better off going to like warner's dock or or wherever like Mm -hmm. the fact that they had the balls to not be like oh yeah yeah we'll figure it out you know they were like honest like yeah we could do it but you'd be better you know sacrificing a potential sale or whatever to take care of somebody i you know i respected the crap out of that yeah yeah for sure that that's always the worst when when you take some something somewhere and they just want to uh we'll throw this part at it or that yeah, part at yeah. it and you yeah, know we'll they're, just, they're just mm. chucking chucking darts at that point yeah that that yeah. is pretty cool of them to say hey yeah you probably should take it to a special well i mean and that's the we want to you know when it comes to that you know we like it's hard because we really want to be helpful yeah. but you just you just know like as much as we're trying to be helpful like at some point it's just not going to be helpful if you if you can't you know and 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 in your case we knew that we i mean we take you know we take trade-ins all the time and you know when we take them in with with um you know evan roots on it it's like boy you know we're really kind of rolling the dice because if we need if we need to repair something on it which we do on all these trades you know we're um we're going to end up shipping it off to another dealership if it's not something simple that we can yeah. figure out and we can get a part for right um so other than that i mean we can we can service anything <laughs> you know yeah. like like um but yeah that's i mean so we're so we're a little different that way you know we cater to cool. the cater to the avid fishing people and that's mainly because that's who we that's who you actually anybody are. that's came to that dealership that's all we know how to do is is fish you know yeah. so um we don't really have like many sales people you know we're just we're we've all kind of like you know come together from with the same passion of fishing yeah. and through that you know you don't have to really have like um sales you know classical sales training yeah you know to work for us if you have a passion for any type any any type of fishing because you're you're um uh, you're, you're going to be a natural at, at selling the products that we have because you don't have to, uh, um, you don't have to regurgitate anything. It's just, you're kind of speaking from yeah. a part sure. of, you know, your experience and all that kind of stuff. So 
it is, you know, so it's, it's, it's a really great thing, but it's also like, it's, it's also been a challenge um, because it's still a business. Yeah. And um, most businesses have bread and butter items, you know, and then they have the cool items that they want to sell. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. and it doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, it might be a, a restaurant or it might be a car dealership or it might be fish and baits, right? Like there might be rods and reels. Like there's stuff that they just have to have. They have to have the $40 reel just to make it, you know, make the numbers work and make the business yeah. go on. But what they really want to do is be making the $400 reels with yeah. an electric chip in it. Right. That, yeah. you know, like, like yeah. that's the cool stuff. So, yeah. So it's a challenge for us to not have the pontoons, not have the jet skis, sure. not have the runabouts, you know, the pleasure boats, um, because that is a monstrous market. Yeah, sure. Um, or totally. it has been anyways. And so we've had really nothing to do with that. So, huh. I mean, we've really, you know, it's, it's a, it's a great, it's a, it's, a, it's a great way to live on one hand where you're just, you know, kind of focusing on the hardcore avid fishermen. Sure. Um, but on the other hand too, like you, you've, you really got to make sure you're, you're doing a great job because man, you know, if, if, if you you don't have anything else to rely on, you know, to, to back up, you know, yeah. so it's, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, it's like anything else, right? Like it's, it's great. Um, it's a lot of fun, but it's a, it's a challenge most days just mm -hmm. you know it's business so yeah, totally. it's it's challenging so i assume um just in that with what you just said the fact that you don't do like all the pontoons jet skis pleasure boats all that i, I mean that had to be like a top-down choice right like you guys were like this is what we're gonna stick with because we actually know and or care about it um i mean that had to be intentional yeah it wasn't just like yeah. ah, we don't really know about what. like i mean that had to be a pretty line in the sand moment right yeah well it was probably more of like a head in the sand moment where <laughs> it's like it's just it was just all you knew it's just all we knew and we you know yeah. it's like well, I respect um, that though, that you weren't going out there trying to peddle something you didn't really know about. Kind of like the, the Avenue thing, you know, yeah. you know, we could figure it out, but like, it's not our bread and butter. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, that's just, um, you know, just luckily, you know, and, and this is the case with a lot of things when you get older and you think about the younger days, luckily you just didn't think about some of that stuff back then. Cause you were too, yeah. you know, I was in my, you know, early twenties, uh, mid twenties. And it was like, I was so focused on bass fishing and, you know, uh, you know, avid boats and, you know, like high performance boats, that kind of stuff where you weren't really thinking about the business side of it. It was more about, um, what's, what's the best setup for this? What's the best setup for that? Uh, you know, how can we redesign this boat or help the manufacturer this boat? So you're really kind of stuck in that, which, you know, is a double sided sword sword. I mean, it's great because you're focusing on what you need to focus on, but um, little did you know, like if, you know, if you knew something about the business side of it, you know, you could have been, sure. you, know, you might, you might've been better off, you know, it's hard to say, right. You know, it's just like, I really, my guys get sick of this, but I, I talk in like bass fishing analogies all day, but it's just like, <laughs> you know, what decision throughout the day was the right one, right? Like you might've made a wrong yeah. decision that led you to the right decision. You know, you don't know. Right? right. And it's the same thing in business. When you start looking back, you know, 10 years ago, you're like, Oh man, knowing what I know now, we would have done this. Right. Well, but then if you would have done that, you may have never ended up where you're currently at. Too. Right. So, yep. Totally. Like, so you can, you can art, you can, you know, wrestle with that all day long and never know if you're right or not. So yeah. all I know now is like, we are, you know, we're in a good spot now. We still cater to the serious fishing people, you know, the fishing crowd, um, which is, which is what we want to do. You know, yeah. that's no, no matter what happens in our world, we want the, you know, the most, um, you know, if we want to have a home for the most, avid serious you know fishermen in our area you know Perfect. 
not and not that you have to be to to do business with us but we 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 just don't want to get in a spot where it's like you know oh we don't understand these electronics oh you have to yeah. go somewhere else right yeah, or yeah, yeah you know we can't fix that you'll have to, we are, our techs our technicians are not qualified enough you'll have to go somewhere else and fix that you know like um we want to make sure that no matter how complex the fishing world gets or yeah. the motors get or the yeah. whatever like we we want to make sure that we we have a spot for you and we can take care of you like so if you you know if you don't you know broaden your horizons from a offerings standpoint then you know you're you're very good at that but it, you know so if you if you start going a little wider you know and you want to yeah. stock a bunch of pontoons and a bunch of these and you know you got docks out front and you got all this other stuff it's like you really start to kind of lose focus on what you're actually for here sure. for right you know yep. and then your and then your service kind of follows suit so yeah yeah that makes sense yeah yeah it's that's us in a nutshell. Okay. Um, what other so what other brands are y'all are y'all selling now? Because last time I was in there, you guys had Skeeters on the floor. You had Phoenix. Um, is that it, or what else do you? Um, we've got Skeeter, Phoenix, Ranger, um, Warrior, which is a, oh, yeah. a deep V, kind of a small batch deep V uh, fiberglass boat. Warrior makes some pretty dope stuff, dude. Like they, I don't know if they still yeah, do, but they, they did yeah. make a, a, they had a couple weird sort of almost hybrid hull, like bass, bass deep V looking thing. Yeah, yeah. They were pretty neat though. Yeah. They were pretty cool. There's still a few floating mm -hmm. around out there. Mm -hmm. uh, we've taken them in on trade and sold them um, a couple times. There's just not, there's not many, but yeah, they are yeah. kind of a cool, a cool uh, hybrid uh, yeah. deal. Um, and then we actually have, um, um, uh xl boats they're uh mm. they're like a high performance john boat uh, yep. style they're very yeah. very uh very well regarded in the duck hunting crowd yeah right on. um so we so yeah so we have that too so that that's like about as like branched out as we get is into a uh like a premium duck boat brand okay yeah. um other than that you know um, and you know ranger does have you know we you know ranger now and in, in today's world ranger does have aluminum boats ranger yep. does have pontoons so we have access to those um so if you wanted what we could get one but like it's not something that we really like concentrate on yeah um your brother fishes out of a flat bottom <laughs> ranger right yep. an aluminum ranger um okay yeah. who's the better fisherman you or your brother uh <laughs> probably my brother really okay yeah He's probably the better fisherman. Um, yeah, I mean, just I, I don't know. He's got a knack. I don't, yeah. you know, you know, yeah, like, he's a stick, you know, no doubt about it. But yeah, yeah, he, he's, you know, he's, he, it's always been that way. You know, oh. um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is, but okay. I mean, he'll, <laughs> he'll, he's, you know, he, when we fished together, um, and there was one year where, um, well, during the COVID years where um inventory was low and i didn't have a boat so i mm -hmm. um I, we fished out of his all year yep and uh so he fished out of the front there but normally fishes out of the back when he fishes when we fish together and you know he's always always good for you know a handful of fish that you just you have no idea what why you know yeah. like <laughs> you just right. you know, like he's just got he's got his own he's style fishy. of fishing and he does it his own way you know, no matter how much I yell at him to not do it that way or tell him this, you know, it's like, he just does it and he doesn't care and it works. Yeah. You know, you, you know, it's just like kind of one of them guys that are fishy, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. For like sure. You just, you can't, you don't really know it. It might not make sense, but it like, it just, it works. It works for him. Yeah, Even though if you tried yeah. it, it wouldn't work for you. Yeah. It wouldn't work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it, it works for him. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, Nate, you got anything? Because I have one specific question I want to ask Justin. I don't know if you have anything on like the boat dealership, boat world stuff. Uh, I, I the only question I had was like, uh, you do like the boat, uh, kind of the boat sales and all that. Have you dabbled into like it electronics uh, sales or installations or uh, anything like that with kind yeah, of yeah, that's way like its own world now too. Market, yeah, the way today's yeah. market's gone. Yeah, I mean we do, we do all of that. I mean we we okay. have awesome. Yeah, and that's that's let's say we've we've done all that um, for years now. Um, so our, you know, I used to be 
the electronics expert there. Then this was probably 10, eight to 10 years ago now. Um, it, that was back when electronics weren't near what they are today, yep. right? Flashers still, and paper graphs. Yeah, you know, uh, they weren't. That, weren't <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just yeah. <laughs> not that far. Not that far. You know, like yeah. like side imaging. You know, it was yeah. like you know, like yeah. oh, I don't understand. I'll go talk to Justin. It's like so. <laughs> yeah. What I'm getting at is that now we've been doing it for so long, for so many years, and our technicians um, are way more versed in the tech the new technology uh -huh. than i am for sure you know i used to know exactly what uh ethernet cords and adapters and all this other stuff you needed and now it's like i i, I just i haven't been if you're not installing it uh -huh. yeah. it's really hard to understand what you need because nothing is straightforward anymore yeah. everything needs adapters multiple so this, multiple that yeah. you can only install it this way don't put it over here so they have, you know, they have just like blown through the roof with knowledge of how to install something. That's awesome. So that, that's yeah, what I would sure. tell anybody out there. Like, I mean, there's no, there's nothing wrong with it, you know, doing something yourself and trying to figure it out if you got the time. I mean, that's a great way to learn. That's how we've learned. But um, anybody out there, like go to your, go to a dealer and see if, if they've done it, if they have, have them do it. Because yeah, there's a better chance of it working and working the right way for a longer period of time than if you start, yeah. you know, wiring it now. You know, we're, we're getting to the point with electronics where if you don't use the right wire, it doesn't yep. work. It doesn't yep. work right. Right. Yep. And that yep. never used to be the case. You could wire it with, you know, speaker wire, yeah. you know, 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, like, it just so didn't matter. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it was like, now you can't do that now. So yeah. you, there's really some intricacies of all this rigging. You, you can't, you can't afford to not have it professionally installed. No matter. Totally. And that's not a pitch for us just anywhere. Like just get to a reputable dealer make sure they've done it before and have them do it. It's yeah. like, it will, it will save you money for sure or time yeah. for sure. Are you guys yeah. doing like pretty, uh, pretty hand, not hands on? What am I, what's the word? I'm like, are you guys doing pretty like, uh, heavy, like techie stuff, like three units up front, three on the console? Like, I mean, are you guys doing like tournament style, tournament grade riggings on boats? Yeah. 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 And honestly, I mean, is that the, pretty common for y'all now? Yeah. And the walleye boats are, I mean, are probably, are probably more complex than the bass. Setup. Really? Yeah. I mean, they've, we've been doing, um, I mean, four and five graph setups now for years on, on walleye boats and five I I ours and all that stuff. Yeah. That's I mean, cool. they've, they've, they've got a, uh, they've got a lot of technology into the walleye fishing. Cause okay. you know, they've been fished, you know, they fish open water a lot of times, right? So sure. it's like they have more use for that than the bass guys have had in the past. Um, but yeah, they've got, yeah, I mean, we do all that. Like, I mean, some of these things, you know, would just, it, it's just worth you know walking through the shop and looking at them because it's like holy cow man yeah you know 16 inch graphs everywhere and um i mean it's just like if you can think it up like people are doing it now it's yeah great yeah, yeah it's awesome yeah. yep uh, what are what are your personal thoughts justin on um the evil the dreaded forward-facing sonar <laughs> yeah i don't i, I mean i'm i'm I was kind of, I felt like I was kind of in the dark on all the, the talk about it up until mm -hmm. like these last few Bassmaster tournaments. Um, and they were really, they were really hammering it on there. Um, yeah. I don't know, man. It's a weird, it's a weird thing. Cause I don't, it's like, it's like such a non issue that it's just weird. It's, it's kind of hard to figure out why, why is it being made as an issue? And, and it's hard for me to understand that because we've, um, you know, I've come up in tournament fishing, always having the newest uh, technology um, as fast as I can have it sure, and yeah. having it work. Right. And none of it's ever been a problem until now. And there's yeah. been so many advancements 
And it's like all these other advancements are completely fine, but now somehow this live sonar, which mind you, a lot of people don't know this, but that's been around since 2015. It's not a new technology. Yeah, long yeah, long yeah. time, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah been mass around. marketed since 18 even, like like to the masses for yeah. six, yeah, seven is. years even, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was released in, I believe, in ICAST 2015, a bit probably available in 16. Um, guys have had it, pro fishermen have had it, you know, pan optics since then. Yep. And then it morphed into live scope. Um, and even live scope has been around for half of that time, right? Yep. And yeah. so, so that's the other part of this. It's like, what, all of a sudden, this is a Yeah, that's been a, the weird hang up in my head, problem. too. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's kind of a, it's kind of a weird time. You know, it's, it, I don't think it's as much about the technology as it is about the the people in the sport right now. And I think they've, I think a lot of people, you know, even up on the pro level, I think they're just seeing an opportunity to, um, justify some shortcomings mm-hmm. and, um, they've kind of forgot about the things that they used to do, um, when they were younger that the older crowd at that time didn't do. Right. Right. Exactly. And so and that's kind of what's happening now is you're, you know, you're, you're, you're able to, you've kind of got a built in excuse of why the, you know, maybe the younger crowd is doing what they're doing because it's got to be just for the technology. Right. Like it can't yeah. be anything else, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So totally. I think there's a little bit of that. Um, I mean, the technology is, it is fascinating. It is great. Oh, for sure. You know, um, you know, but you know, so, uh, so is GPS. So are lake right. maps. Those yeah. are great. Yeah. Gr- like, like you couldn't function if you didn't have a lake map. On oh your my GPS, gosh. True. You know? Yeah. Um, spot lock, you know, all these, I mean, major arguably, arguably like more major than live sonar. Yep. Um, you know, spot lock and, and GPS, like, I mean, you, you wouldn't, Right now, I mean, you wouldn't be able to function without without yeah. having a an trolling motor that can anchor itself. Yep. Um. So, so yeah, and that and that's that seemed to not be a problem. So it just doesn't it doesn't follow course, which is confusing, right? Like yeah. it just yeah. doesn't follow well course put. where you know it, there's a complaint, there's a complaint, there's a complaint. Like, and I've seen it all the way from side imaging, uh, through the different versions of side imaging to 360 and the different mm. versions of 360. You know, we had all of that and we used it to its full capacity. And I mean, and it helped us win some tournaments in the in yeah. the past. Right. But nobody was, you know, questioning us, you know, and saying yeah, that it yeah. was unfair. That's the only right. reason why we caught. So, so all of a sudden, I think it's just, I, I don't know. I, I haven't quite figured it out. And why is it such a, why it's such a topic? You know, it, to me, it just seems like there's, it's, it's a choice. Like it, like, it seems like we're, we're, talking about it like we don't have a choice like we either have to Mm -hmm. have to have it or it has to be banned yeah the choice of not having it does not exist right yeah i don't know why that is yeah it is weird too i actually i talked to a feller at uh, again at shields when i was working there before and uh i can't remember what we fixed on his boat um maybe his talons or something and we were talking about electronics and uh, he's like so you're a younger fella he's like you like this uh this forward what did he call it forward pointing some imaging i can't remember how he said it totally wrong and i was like yeah i have you know i have live scope in my boat he goes well that's just cheating if you ask me and mm-hmm. i was like but he was cool he wasn't being a total jerk but i yeah. kind of use it as a moment to ask some questions and so i said well why is it cheating to you and he goes well that's just you can just find the fish so easily you, you know you can basically just put them in the boat now and so I was, you know, I think that's like really where a lot of it comes from is just the total ignorance of it. People think if you have forward facing sonar, if you have live imaging, then like it makes it too easy or something. Mm-hmm. And that's really not the case at all. If anything, you know, I've told this to a bunch of people, sometimes live scope will drive you freaking crazy because you'll pull up on a school or you'll pull up on a, a lay down or a dock or whatever, and you can see them moving all over and you can't get them to bite or they'll chase your, your yeah. swim bait or your, your jerk bait mm-hmm. or whatever down that you can't get them to commit, you change colors, change depth. And you know, you don't leave fish to find fish. And so you lose two hours of the tournament trying to catch these fish that will not bite. Whereas before, if they didn't bite, you just roll on. And so I don't know. <coughs> It's a weird deal. Yeah, I mean, it really is strange. 
Yeah, that's for sure. I think so much of it's based in ignorance. But the one thing I do think that makes it a little different, excuse me for coughing there, um, is one of the bigger deals with forward facing, in my opinion, and I'm no expert, but uh, back in the day, suspended fish, like on side imaging or down imaging, it was like, oh, no, they're suspended. And now with with live scope suspended is like sort of a good thing. All of a sudden, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like it's it yeah. kind of flip that dynamic. Yeah. I don't know why that makes people mad. I think that's kind of fun, but um, yeah. But reality is, you know, this and this kind of sums it up. Is like with it or without it, um, you know, people are going to do the same thing because you know we've been doing the same thing in the past. Uh, I was telling a story about <clears throat> the other day about this. We were going down, you know, um, I don't know, years and years ago before we had live sonar we would go to table rock and fish down there you know and for fun this this time of year yeah. and there's a lot of a lot of standing timber in table rock in a lot of these areas and we would throw um we would throw a rigs for spotted you know the spotted bass and and some some large too were in the, uh in those trees and we would catch them out of the tops of the trees before yeah. we had any of that well all it really changed is that we got hung up, you know, three out of the five casts and we had to go retrieve our bait. <laughs> yeah, right. But yeah. we still caught fish doing it. We still figured out a way to catch fish doing it. So that's the one thing I think if anybody has a problem with this is like they may not, they may, they may have never done that in the past and they don't realize that these anglers now that are using it and are being successful they're not all of them have changed the way they fish. Sure. They, yeah. they are still fishing the way that they used to fish. It's just now they, they have, they have some sort of idea of what they're, where, what, how many fish are there maybe and where to cast. But that's, that's the same thing back in the day with side imaging, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, people yeah side imaging, it's it. like all of a sudden it's like, I fished the same point, but now all of a sudden I know exactly what's there yeah. and I know where to cast. Right. It's not that you'd never fished it before, you know, yeah, totally. and now you're fishing. Yeah. I mean, certainly there are some things like that, but like those situations you need to understand. And I think that will maybe uh, alleviate a little, uh, a little tension, you know, about it being just a, 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 a point at them and, and get them in the boat type right. situation, you know, yeah. it's like, cause it certainly hasn't been that way for us. Nope. We, we fish a lot of the same stuff. We might fish it a little differently or expand on it now that we have the technology to do that. But, yeah. um, you know, before we had it, what we would do is we would take the external 2D transducer on the on our trolling motor and we would just angle it. Yep. So, you know, so it was shooting out in front of us. It yeah. wasn't live sonar, uh, but it was basically, yeah. you know, um, you know, it would get that cone out in the front of you. So that way when, you know, when you did, you know, when you were pitching a drop shot, it would fall into that cone and you would see the fish where it's at, not not right below you. You know, you, it's not like live sonar where it would go out, you know, 50, right. 60 feet, but it would yeah. maybe go out like 10 feet in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a, so it's like, even if you, when you don't have these fancy things, like you still yeah. figure out ways to, absolutely better your your equipment so yeah. i don't know yeah. i think people just probably should just settle down about it a little bit i don't think it's, <laughs> i don't think it's going yeah. anywhere you know i think yeah, i think that's sure. the advice yeah i think yeah. that's the advice right there just relax <laughs> calm down it doesn't put yeah. the fish in the boat yeah. automatically and like you said i think for certain anglers it just suits them um i was talking to gussie about that and he was saying how he's always been into you know he calls it moping up in canada mm -hmm. um but now with he's a he's a hummingbird guide so uh mega live with mega live mm -hmm. you can see him and it, it just kind of ups his 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 moping game a little bit it doesn't change how he fishes or what he fishes it just allows him to be a little more efficient and that's who wouldn't want that i mean even uh nate do you remember two years ago or whatever it was with bass attack we had that two day on the chip of flowage and i hadn't fished the flowage for 20 years and that was for muskies yeah. and so we're running around with live scope and six seven feet of water and we'd move it past lay downs and if we saw movement we'd stop and fish it and if we didn't we'd keep it moving you know so you're yeah. just being a little yeah. more efficient it doesn't put them in the boat but maybe it speeds up the learning curve a little but yeah people need to people need to relax i think um yeah just 
just relax. You'll yeah, be all right. We'll, just, we'll get through it. It's just that much, you know, of all the things on your boat, it's that much that makes it a little bit better. You know, yep. it's not, um, I mean, your power poles make it a little bit better. Totally. Your spotlight yeah. makes it a little bit better. You know, yeah, your boat, you know, the size of your boat and the motor, you know, make yep. things a little bit better. Like all of it makes it better, but we all know, um, which, you know, is probably a thing. You know, like most of us tournament uh, anglers, we all probably think this similar on that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the non-tournament fishermen and maybe, which this is typically how uh, social media works. Yeah. Typically naysayers are people that may, they may never have fished. Oh, for yeah. sure. You know, yeah. They yeah. Never, yeah. you know, they may be, maybe never have owned a boat, maybe never fished or rarely fish. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly have probably never even used the technology. Right. right. So those are always the thing. But the thing is with social media, like there's no pre-qualifiers to make a post. So right. you know, say whatever you want. Yeah. You know, yeah. don't have to be an expert to be allowed. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I yeah. think that's part of it too. So do you guys bringing it back to the boat center, Justin, do you guys set up live scope setups for people? Cause that's another part of it is I think there is sort of a shroud of mystery for some people. And so what you don't understand, you tend to fear a little bit, what you fear a little bit. Sometimes you sort of like turn into a monster, you know, like, Oh, that's bad. Why is it bad? Well, cause I don't get it. Can you help people get that crap set up on their boat? Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we've got we we just did one last week, and we've got another one coming up this week. A live scope, just just from so so I will if just go back around here quick because I feel like this is probably the most important for to to say for like our our sport as a whole. Um, and this is why I don't think it's going anywhere. Um, is you know, every, I mean, you guys have heard it, I'm sure, a ton. Like growing the sport, you know, you want to grow yeah, the yeah. sport. Yeah. You know, you talked about a little bit with, you know, the kids in a youth program or a youth mm-hmm. tournament, something like that, right? We want to grow the sport. Um, it's really hard to grow the sport uh, without financial support. Totally. It's really hard. Like, it's it, it's basically impossible. Like, it doesn't work that way. If you don't have the resources, um, there's, no, there's no growing. Like, you have mm-hmm. to have that. So yeah, yeah. this has been a thing we've – chatted about with like the um you know with Bassmaster right and um you know you gotta think of it like you know if if you want to um if you want to grow the sport and maybe not have like an an entry fee someday for these for the elite series anglers which they've talked Mm -hmm. about a lot right and really want you've got to have these sponsorships you you know these mega sponsorship dollars to contribute um yeah you know to growing the sport so if you uh make it a habit of banning things um then and there's nothing to buy um or there's no promotion of yeah. stuff to buy right like yeah, when you ban cool. baits or you ban technologies and stuff um now banning is different than limiting you know limiting is a different thing but when you ban things you're basically banning years and years of of resources coming into the to your organization and yeah. in this world you know this this forward facing sonar already like we should be viewing it as like one of the greatest things and maybe all this negative press is great too because it's bringing a lot of attention um to this but it's so it brings it brings resources into our sport mm-hmm. you know like in our dealership um you know there's people uh having them install in our dealership would bring money into our dealership then we can support our sport more that way organizations uh bass clubs are using the technology so more people in the back you know it's just all around like you got to have that in order for our sport to stay healthy so you you know that is one thing you know if you're getting all bent out of shape about this you might want to think about that because even if you want walleye stocked into your your home lake you you may not want to make it a habit of trying to ban everything that comes across the table. Mm-hmm. You might want to promote something which may um, in return promote your fisheries. The more money we have uh, in our what, DNR or our dealership or our club or whatever it is, the more we can do with that. Yeah. So so don't don't um, don't be so quick to to shut down um, certain things you know in our world because we don't, it's not a very big world that we live in. 
True. You know, in, in the in the <laughs> tournament world or just just the just fishing the fishing world yep. to begin with. So, like, we need basically need everything we can get. Yeah. But I think yeah. that's a, that's yeah. an important thing to talk about when you when you're having these conversations. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. Also, banning is a banning is a um, slippery slope. You start banning stuff, and you know it, it just gets out of control quick. And I'll say this, and we can move on because I really have one last specific question for you, Justin. It's going to sound a little loaded, and maybe it is, but <coughs> excuse me, goodness gracious. I'll say this is the last thing about forward facing sonar. In case, unless you have something else you want to toss in, Nate. No, catching uh -huh. fish on live scope is so freaking fun. I don't care what anybody says. It is so fun. The first time I went out here on Little Strum Lake in Strum, Wisconsin, and saw a pike come up out of the weeds and absolutely annihilate a spinnerbait, that was that was so stinking fun. So, like, I get all the anger and the what up, but, man, it is, it's a fun way to catch them. And, it, honestly, I feel like it can make you a better fisherman even outside of just the – the catching because as you're looking out in front of you you can see where you know depth changes are where weed beds stop where the bottom changes like you can see stuff out and you know how to be a little more specific with your casting so it's not a it's not harry potter's wand it's not creating magic you know you still got to know how to fish but all right yeah. next question last yeah. question whatever thank you again justin for being here we've had you on for like two hours i'm so appreciative man um heck yeah uh, and i think you are the most qualified person to answer this question why are bass boats so dang expensive in 2024 yeah <laughs> um <laughs> i'm not trying to get like a get you a gotcha question but i mean like i remember back in the day not even that long ago a few years ago you opened up Bassmaster magazine and it was like you know this model with this motor for like fifty thousand, whatever and now you're literally seeing mag is like like open spreads of of bass boats where like the prices shown are starting at ninety eight thousand or, mm -hmm. or whatever why why are boats so expensive right now yeah i'm, I'm always asked this, the, that same question you know um you know because they don't get any easier to sell for us you know the more yeah. expensive they are right um you know but I would, I will, when, so when I, when I, when it all kind of came together for me is um, years and years ago, when I went and made my first trip to uh, Kilgore, Texas, where Skeeter is made mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and toured the factory, you tour the factory and you immediately understand why they are, they cost what they cost. Okay. Um, I would, I was, I was, you know, pretty green back then. And I, I was, I don't know what I was expecting, but I was, I would have expected to see, I, I wouldn't have been surprised to see um, automation, you know, like maybe like everybody's seen like some videos of like how cars are made and sure. that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, there is zero of that in a boat factory in a fiber. Okay. Uh, Maybe an aluminum boat factory. I've never, I've not been through a large scale aluminum boat factory. Um, but in the fiberglass factories I've been through, it is, uh, they are all hand built. So Crazy. just like your hand built uh, glide baits that are $350 and that doesn't right. make any sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> you've got, I mean, you've got, a hundred times the hands building these boats and that's why they cost that i mean it yeah. is the factories are chock full of people and they're all hand built so they're very very labor intensive to build yeah there's nothing for sure about them so uh, and out so and i don't know how you'll i mean i could talk about this all day so thanks for letting me go on but um <laughs> just just what so here's one thing so like there's a there's a shelf life on gel coat mm -hmm. sure so like you have so you invest in buying you know the canary yellow in a gel coat right and if you don't build any in that month it gets tossed really you know? yeah so there's there's a lot of overhead like that yeah. that has to be planned on you know so there's a lot of that but there's in there and then you know these they're all hand built in these molds you know they're all hand sprayed Mm -hmm. There's no machine spray yeah. in the fiberglass. It's all people. 
and it's all by hand. It's all by touch and feel. Um, so it's a lot of, a lot of man hours, a yeah. lot of man hours that go into a boat. And the other thing that makes them so expensive coupled onto that is the, the engines, which, yeah. um, I mean, the engines, I mean, anybody that looked at a cost of engine, like that is a third of the boat total boat price nowadays. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. The other third is the accessories. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's just wild, but you know, 20 to $25,000 worth of electronics is not crazy talk. You know I mean? That's, no, that's not common. Yep. That's common. Yeah. And then you've got the, you know, the trailers, you know, and the trailer price in there and then the boat. So before you know it, you know, 30, 30, 30, you know, like all of a sudden you're like, Whoa, we've got, you know, 80,000 bucks, yeah, hundred thousand right. dollars, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it, there's a lot of overhead and then the dealerships, you know, our dealerships, you know, in order to support those boats, we have to have a lot of people too. Yeah. Um, you know, for servicing them and because, because they are hand built, you know, they require a lot of input from us as well. So, I mean, there's just, like I said, there's, it's, this is why fishing is an expensive sport because the, the demand is pretty low um, compared to, you know, automotive you know or um, some other power sports right sure. like like right. the serious fisherman is just that that market is is minuscule compared to the general public that buys vehicles every day right so yeah, sure. you know so you, you've got a really you got a lot of people building these products and then you've got a small amount of people to sell them to mm. and that's you know that's where the high cost comes in. You know, yeah, that's a never, bad it, business dynamic. Yeah. And that's not really how you want it. Yeah. That's if you were to draw yeah. it up and we say it all the time, like that's just not how you do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But luckily enough, we are uh, all, you know, luck, luckily, lucky for us, like, you know, especially bass fishermen, but hardcore, any fishermen are so obsessive yeah. that yeah. it yeah. wouldn't matter. <laughs> you know, we just keep pushing it and keep yeah. pushing it. And, yeah. and, you know, that's, um, that's the other reason why, you know, if people want boat prices to go down, then, you know, you stop buying boats and that, that'll happen. Yeah. But they it's don't not keep happening. going up when nobody buys them. Mm -hmm. That's a good so. summary right there. Yeah. That's really good. Um, well, uh, Justin, thank you, man, for your time. Nate, do you have anything else for Mr. Rowe before we let him, uh, roll out of here? No, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, thank, thank you. Yeah. This was, yeah, man, this seriously. was awesome. Yeah, it's fun. I first one I've ever done, and um, I'd be happy to come back at some point. Yeah, heck yeah, dude! It was really fun. You did great. Yeah. I'm not just saying that to be nice. Like it was very conversational. You weren't weird. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it went really good, man. Oh, one one small thing we didn't even get to it. Uh, what's what's one of your favorite kind of tacos, Justin? Um, man, I you know, and I don't know. I like I'm a huge, huge fan of Chipotle. Oh, like dude. Huge fan I of Chipotle. Love Chipotle. So, yes. I mean, I, I hate that I couldn't say a taco. No, but um, yeah, Chipotle is so freaking good. I would sub that in for like a burrito bowl. Okay. Any day. All right. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm in for a burrito. I mean, I got nothing against tacos. I'm just not very well versed in like, like, I could tell you hard shells are a hard no. Okay. Soft shells only. <laughs> Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, but then it's probably just, it's just a basic soft shell meat, cheese, sour cream. Perfect. With a little yes. sauce on it. Yeah. Dude, dude. Okay. So really quick. I know I keep on saying I'm gonna let you out of here, but, uh, a little <laughs> while ago, <clears throat> um, I was talking to my wife who is Puerto Rican, who is a taco junkie, um, who knows tacos forwards and backwards. And I was like, if you could only have one taco the rest of your life, what would you pick? And she's like, I think I would go with like a soft shell taco with just basic meat, cheese, sour cream, a little bit of salsa. Like she went like straight, like white yeah. girl taco. I was so shocked and like sort of like pleasantly surprised that she didn't go all deep and like profound and some like really complicated thing. But, but yeah, man, that's a, that's we, a good route. We, we do a lot of, we do a lot of wild game tacos here. Same. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's nice. always, we just had uh, wild turkey tacos okay. last night. Heck yeah. Uh, goose tacos are great. Like, wow. Yeah. 
So that's and venison tacos, of course. Venny's, yeah, venny yeah, tacos yeah, are awesome. Yeah. yeah. So well, doggone it. Yeah. All right, Justin. Well, I appreciate you, man. You can go ahead and hang up. And uh, yeah, if anybody has not yet, make sure you uh, you find uh, the Boat Center online, especially if you're looking at because um, I don't know if we did talk about it, but they do um, sell used boats and um they service electronics they do everything you need there so um thank you again justin we appreciate your time brother all right thanks guys all right man we'll talk to you later yeah appreciate it take it easy all right that was dope dude that yeah that was good that was awesome he he definitely had a lot of info uh a lot of good insight on the on the forward facing deal that uh, i didn't, uh, didn't anticipate that was that was cool yeah yeah i love that it was very um not uh, I wouldn't say not opinionated, but it wasn't like yeah. forward facing is good. Forward facing is bad. It was like, it was like, why are we getting our, our feelings exactly, so yeah. hurt about this? Like, cause he's right. Yes. The weird thing is I was just listening to, um, the homie Luke Duncan the other day. Shout out Luke Duncan. Yep, um, shout out. Big shout out to LD. And, uh, he said it too. And like, I knew it, you know, how sometimes, you know, something, but it's not until somebody says it like real black and white that you're like, oh yeah. Like you knew it, like it yeah. wasn't new information, but he said that thing about how live scope was developed in like 15, 16 was pushed out to the masses and like 18 as pan optics. So it's been around yeah. for six years, six years as far as like wide scale availability. Why are we so offended yes. by it now? Yeah, I, I don't understand it. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty wild. Uh, yeah. And you know, everybody's talking about you know that and how it's, it's driving costs and making it more difficult to to get into fishing and like you know just like he said it's it's one it's not in the city you don't you don't have to have it to get into no. fishing no if, if you want it if you want to get into fishing you can do that with with any electronics and anything you can do that from the shore help exactly yeah you, you don't even need it <laughs> exactly you can you know dabble in and as you progress uh you know you know, then stuff may become a little bit more uh, required, but but to to get into fishing and grow the sport and this is killing it. That's just nonsense. No, just it's absolutely not, it's, crazy. It's, it's like it's like I think some of it is like what I said is I think some of it's based on ignorance. Like people oh, don't for sure. know it, haven't used it, don't understand it. Which I mean, I'm not trying to get all deep and profound and whatever right now, but that was the driving force of racism. People didn't understand to embrace the differences right. between black people and white people. And that turned into anger and hate and blah, blah, blah. And all that was obviously horse shit. You know what I'm saying? Part of my language, yeah. but like, yeah, yeah. it's the same thing with forward facing sonar. Like I do get the argument that during derbies, like watching live, um, watching like Bassmaster live or major league fishing live and watching them just with their heads down, looking at their screen. I totally get that that can get a little boring to watch, but even that though, it's kind of dope now when they do like the, um, images or whatever however you want like yeah. when they tap yeah. the fish finder you can see what they yeah, yeah. like that's dope like that's really fun to watch so yeah i yeah, don't know it's it all is. it's all weird all, all the hatred on it's kind of strange and um i really enjoy using live scope if tomorrow it got banned nationwide for bass tournaments i'd be like okay like dudes are still right, gonna go out yeah. i, I guarantee freaking to you someone like trey mckinney who just won that uh derby on fork i guarantee yes. you if you took away a live scope from him he's still gonna go out there and catch him yeah i guarantee yeah, he, it. He, he's yeah he's the type of guy that's gonna put the time in uh get the work done and and is is one of those fishy guys like we talked yep. about earlier that's just He's going fishy. to go out and catch fish yes yep. yeah you think you think gerald swindle who who uses forward facing sonar you think uh yeah. jacob wheeler you think uh polinick iconelli if you took away live scope that they'd be like oh i can't fish of course not yeah. you know and and like Absolutely and like not. And like Justin said, too, I, I do remember that back in the day when side imaging, like mega side imaging really became a thing. Yeah. And dudes were like, oh, they're going to blow up all the spots. They're going to give away all the juice, all oh, that rock pile. I was the only person who knew that was there. Two things. Number one, no, you're not. <laughs> like that, yeah. You're not the only person who knew that rock pile was there. Number two, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's like it's technology is that thing where you can either – uh, back in the day, ride snowboards. I used to have a ride snowboard. I really, really liked it. And then I broke it on a handrail. It was sad. Anyway, ride <laughs> snowboards had this really dope graphic on the bottom of a snowboard that said, run with us or run from us. 
and it was like it was like this cool like tattooy looking skeleton yeah. and like it was a really dope graphic but that phrase always stood out to me run with us or run from us and i feel like that's technology uh, in general but especially in fishing you can either run with it and figure it out and put the time in and get better at it or you can run from it and be scared of it and get all dumb and i don't know yeah. it's just it just seems it just seems weird and i do think to completely contradict myself here i do think like there is a certain validity to randy blockett saying you know it takes away some of the wonder some of the unknown some of the mystery of fishing and that, that's that's maybe true um yeah but at the same time it's not because I'm, I'm just going back and forth like devil's advocating myself here but at the same time it's not because like i said there, there's times where you can um last year one of the things i wanted to get better at and i think i caught like two fish on it all year but is throwing those big spoons like those um oh uh, what nickels like those big nickel yeah. spoons and whatever those water spoons yeah and the big the giant like seven inch two and a half ounce flutter spoons yeah. and out on lake wasoda which is a lake near us that's a pretty big lake and it's got deep water stuff shoreline stuff creaky stuff i'm pretty much anything you want to fish to a point you can find it there and i found a school off this ledge where it went from like two feet and then it goes out to like four feet and then it just really abruptly drops into like 30 and i found a school in about 25 ish or so feet um and i knew there were bass because i caught a couple small ones on a what was i throwing i can't remember what it was a football jig or something maybe but then i threw the flutter spoon and i couldn't get them to bite could not mm -hmm. get them to bite and i they'd chase after it a million miles an hour in that live scope they just zoom up at it and then you'd be like holding your rod as tight as you could waiting for that thump and it never came and so it doesn't completely take away the mystery of fishing because oh, I still yeah, don't freaking no. know why I couldn't catch those fish. You know, like they're still wild animals. It's still not, it's not basketball in a gym where like if you miss a shot, it's on you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, for know. sure. Anyway, all right. So I guess that's all we got. Um, thank you so <laughs> much, Justin Rowe, for um, coming on, dude. What a great, I mean, he was a great guest. Yeah. Um, Heck yeah. And uh, he said he'd be down to jump on again. I'd be down to have him on again for sure. Without, um, without a doubt. And he didn't talk about it much, but that dude wins a lot of tournaments. He fishes a lot of tournaments. He wins a lot. Um, obviously, he fishes in the Chippewa Valley Bass Attack, and not last year, but the year before. Uh, he and his brother won two or three derbies straight on Bass Attack. And again, that's a club full of sticks. Um, yeah. So, yeah, the dude can fish. So, And if you're local, uh, anywhere near northern Wisconsin, you need your boat worked on, you're looking at getting a new one, definitely look up the Boat Center. And again, they're not a sponsor. Um but I, I, I really dig the idea that they're uh, highly specific to fishing. You know, they're not mm -hmm. doing any kind of floating watercraft. Like, they're out there trying to rig up fishermen. So, that's really dope. Uh, Nate, yeah. what else you got before we close her out? I really don't have anything. That was, uh, like I said, an awesome interview. Uh, yeah. A really cool kind of straightforward deal with, with the boat center like that. Yeah, that's that's perfect. You know, stick stick to your gun. Stick to what you know. And it's easy to do stuff well that you know well you know what i mean yeah so, yeah you care uh, you about know, it. yeah exactly yeah so that's awesome that that's really all i got you know yeah. yeah hats off to him again thank you so yeah all right man so what do you got nate i said uh remember positivity is worth the effort peace bye-bye appreciate you guys we'll catch you on the next one